ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the planning board meeting of September 9th. Um, this is our first time test driving it in this this room. Um, I think, Deb, do you mind shutting that door? No, oh, thank you. Um, an important announcement to make, at 9 o'clock the rest of the library closes and we'll have access to the restrooms that are outside this door, but if we go out of those doors, we'll cause a great ruckus and a stir and we'll be in the police beat. So we're gonna, <laughs> after 9 o'clock, we're gonna go out that door, hopefully. The library <laughs> staff is gonna close those doors and it's gonna put a sign on it and we'll see if we can all avoid the police beat this week. <laughs> us, and, us and the squirrels. Um, so just, um, I want to give everybody a little update. There are several um, hearings that have been advertised that are not going to have any action tonight. Um, number three on our agenda is the continued public hearings for 76 Main Street. There's a request to withdraw. We will take action on that, but there won't be any conversation on that. The um, number four local action unit um, application discussion uh, and recommendation to the select board for the Chamberlain Whalen subdivision. Um, there is no action needed tonight. There'll be no discussion on that. So if you're here for that. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, 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 continued public hearing for Maspinock Woods is gonna be continued. And just so whoever is here, if they're here for that, um, do we know when we're gonna continue that one? Because we can take the action. Shall we just uh, pick up? I think it will be up to the board. I don't think they asked for a specific date. But so what is the agenda like next time? Um, I would not go for next time because I don't think they're, they're contemplating withdrawing or making changes. So I don't think they're going to be, if they're not ready for this week, I doubt they'll be ready for next time. So what's our first meeting in October? The 7th. 7th? So um, I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for Mass Act was October 7th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> and then um, the other uh, new public hearing for Elmwood Farms 3 mm -hmm. off of Adams Street, Myrtle Avenue, and Fitch Avenue amendment to the definitive subdivision plan. Um, the applicant is Abbott Realty Trust. They have requested a continuance to uh, for six weeks, so I'll entertain a motion to continue that public hearing to October 28th. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, just a quick clarification yeah. for everybody that's interested. That's that's the uh, development off Blueberry Lane. It is none the of, development off Blueberry. Right? None of those roads exist on Google Maps. Yes, thank you. Right. <laughs> off Blueberry. So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that means if you're here for the uh, Blueberry Road um, lane, whatever, um, it is not, there's going to be no testimony, nothing heard tonight. October 28th is when they'll be back. So you're welcome to stay, <laughs> um, but nothing will happen tonight. The first we'll discuss it is on the 28th. Thank you. Yeah. Will there be another notice about that? Or will there will be, so, the process is the, the abutters are noticed once, and then the reason we pick particular dates when we continue is we consider that we that is your public notice. So at this meeting, we pick a date certain when they will be uh, when it will come up again. Um, they may continue again, but we will um, discuss it again at least to continue it on the 28th, and then but that's the date certain. So no more mailings will go out about it. It will be the 28th. Maybe in the same place. We'll see how these next few meetings work yeah, out. Yeah, so that's an excellent question, actually. Um, you just have to check the agenda for the planning board. It'll be on the, the location will be on the agenda. Yeah. Um, well, where, so when I looked at the Hawkins site, I could not find this information. It looked like it was on a different site, not on the Hawkins town site. It should, you, the agenda was posted. If you go to the main page down at the bottom, even on the front page of hopkintonma.gov, there's a calendar. And if you click on the appointment for the planning board, all this information is linked to that in, uh, okay, appointment. Okay, I, I almost did that again. Thank you. Um, 
but we, we make a concerted effort to make sure that the public is, um, can follow these meetings. That's, the, that's one of the most important pieces of the process. So if you have trouble finding that information for October 28th, definitely reach out to John by email or by phone, and he will get back to you um, immediately and let you know. Also, shameless plug, but EHOP does a really nice job of e does a really nice sharing job. our agendas and schedules as well. Yeah, absolutely. But we are, we are obligated by law <laughs> to make sure you're noticed appropriately. So the website has to have that information or we haven't done our job. And in Town Hall, there's also a physical posting of every agenda. Um, if you go to the town clerk's office, they'll have a copy of it that they can give you or you can sign up in yeah, the book. Okay. All right, so um, for everybody else, just to give you um, a little bit of a heads up, we're going to do our administrative items first. I had a feeling we were going to mess a lot of folks. <laughs> um, we're going to do our administrative items first. Um, our first continued public hearing that we're going to hear is Whisper Way. Um, we are then going to hear the public hearing on um, 97 to 99 South Street. We are then going to take the um, new public hearing for 223 Pond Street. And then we're going to take the new public hearing for 57 Hayden Row. And then fifth, we're going to take the continued public hearing and new public hearing um, that have to do with the Eversource Energy folks. So just so you know the order of the, of the night as well. All right, John, you want to take us, walk us through the? Yes. What about the church line? That was going to be fourth. Fourth. Yeah. Um, John, do you want me to walk through the administrative items, or do you want to walk through them? Um, I'm happy to walk through them. Okay, go right ahead. Okay. So, if you take one of these and pass them down, Mary, I'm not one of the candidates for uh, planning board vacancy, has submitted her resume just for your information. Um, so, this is just a discussion item. If there is any discussion that anyone wants to have. The uh, joint meeting between the planning board and the select board is tomorrow at 7.20. Uh, and it's going to be in room 215, 216, which is our old meeting room, the, the select board meeting room. Um, and if there's any questions, happy to take them. I think right now we have four candidates. As far as I know, we have four candidates as well. And we appreciate uh, all four people stepping forward. Your hat in the room. And one thing to note, um, as I've been in, in, informed and advised from the town clerk, is that we can get more candidates right up until the meeting time. So Fascinating. there could be some last minute additions, but right Stay now. Stay tuned. It might be a little rodeo action. OK. Um, the other question I wanted to know, do you know if the um, Legacy Farms North bus stop issue, what time it is on the uh, select board agenda, just I for can, members who might want to stay? I can look. Uh, it should have. Should I be Jenna somewhere? Okay, I'll let you look. I'll take a look. Okay. It's on the website. Yeah, I know it's <laughs> <laughs> scary. Awesome. Um, so I'll, I'll plow down um, the zoning advisory committee uh, appointment. We have one more appointment, Mary. Is that right? Yes. We have awesome. one open. All right, and we have an applicant. Great. Is Sundar here? It's all right. He's not. Yeah. That's fine. Um, so we have uh, one more position and we have an applicant um, for the Zoning Advisory Committee, so I would entertain a motion to appoint him. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, the only discussion I want to say is I really appreciate that Sundar uh, found a spot to participate because you know, we couldn't appoint him someplace else and this is an awesome spot for him and we needed, we needed that on the Zach, so I appreciate that. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Did we find it or no? It's all right oh, if you didn't. Sorry. It's all right if you didn't. You can, well, why don't you just, you can continue. I'll look at that tomorrow. I think it's a full agenda for the select when they have the Great Hunt Fence hearing as well. So. They sure do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever time Legacy like, Farms is scheduled for, it might not really be at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, is it anyway. before? Is that anyway? Okay. So unfortunately, I can't look right now. Don't worry about I it. I don't have the internet. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's not letting me search my email. So let's go to the Planning Board Rep for Community Preservation uh, just, Committee. Just for the reference to help, uh, John, it's 
library guest, and it's no password. I connected. It just says there's no internet for some reason. Dave was able to connect. I don't know why my computer can't connect. We're hogging it all up, though. <laughs> All right, there's no worries. Um, okay, so uh, Gary has volunteered to continue on the CPC. So I will entertain a motion to uh, enthusiastically support that. I so move. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Awesome. Um, is somebody coming to talk to us about Legacy Farms North bus stop? No, but I can give an update. Perfect. So we had a uh, site visit with two members of the school, municipal inspections, myself and Elaine, uh, Chief Lee, yep. um, trying to think, and a representative from Legacy Farms. So 83 North, or 83 East Main, the corner of Legacy Farms North, that yep. dilapidated house. Um, there's a, a kind of a yep. open area. They're going to gravel that and allow for parents to come down and park there. And then the bus is going to stop on Legacy Farms North just before that intersection. There's a turn lane, so they're going to they're going to stop in that right hand turn lane and allow kids to get on. Um, Hold on. So entering Legacy Farms North from East Main. Mm -hmm. Leaving Legacy Farms North, getting on to East Main. Thank so you. Coming okay. down Legacy Farms North. Coming down Legacy Farms parents, North. Yeah, the parents can get on to East Main, and the entrance is going to be improved on East Main, and they're going to kind of do a loop and then park. Uh, you know where that, that rock wall is? Mm -hmm. That's basically where the bus stop is going to be. Okay. Uh, and they're going to improve the access by that retention pond and the rock wall. They might do fencing or some kind of a walkway, um, and the kids are going to get on the bus there. So they'll have a, a always stop uh, on Legacy Farms North. Yeah. There's a sidewalk that continues all the way down, so children who can walk can walk all the way down. Um, and there's a crosswalk that crosses Legacy Farms North. Um, at the at the at the intersection with Franklin. Franklin. With Franklin? Yeah. No, no, farther all the way down, right by the right by where the Peach bus Street. Stops. Old Peach Street. So, uh, um, if I'm walking down that hill from Legacy Farms North. I get to Franklin. Mm -hmm. I have to cross Franklin. Nope, you continue get... going down. Uh, so yes. it depends on what side. Yes. yes, you have to cross Franklin. Yes. And that's where the sidewalk is? Yep. On the far side? On the Western Nursery side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sidewalk down to East Main. Yep. And then there's a crosswalk. Crosswalk. Across, I believe. Okay. And they're going to continue the sidewalk along East Main towards the center of town. Yes. They're, they're yes. Out. Yeah. Um, so parents are going to be pulling from East Main. Yep. There is the the wall. Actually, the the children are going to enter the bus. The bus is going to stop on Legacy Farms North. So they're going to come across the gravel parking lot this way. So. Um, this, so if you're familiar with the site, it kind of right next to the house is yep. raised a little bit, yeah. and then it slopes down. They're yep. going to make the slope down part of the gravel parking lot. Yeah. So it's going to go right up to close to that tree. Mm -hmm. So they're, I mean, they can walk across the gravel parking lot a little bit, but it's really going to be that grassy area, area that they walk across. Okay. To the chair. So um, they're going to be plowing that yes. as well? Yes. And um, it's going to be gravel and crush stone? I don't know. I don't know the details of that. It would be kind of interesting to find out because one would last a little bit longer and um, perhaps not get muddy. Will they be coming back to us for a site plan review? So uh, since this is a temporary bus stop and not a parking lot, <laughs> um, it's been determined that it doesn't need planning board It's been determined by who? Uh, people higher than me. I gotcha. And has the historical commission been notified since they've been watching that house? I don't know. We were just pulled into this as kind of an informational. We're not really part of the process. It's really the school committee and Legacy Farms that that is doing this. They were presenting to everyone else. Well, they didn't present to everyone else because they didn't present here. They presented to everyone else on the site. Okay, tell me again who was there. It was um, Carol. I don't know her yeah. name. Yeah. And then. <laughs> I don't remember the other woman's name who was from the school. From the school, yeah. uh, police chief Chuck Cadlick, the director of municipal inspections, Elaine, me, um, 
and then a representative from Legacy Farms, Eric. Um, to, the chair, to me, it's kind of important if we find out whether it's going to be free from mud and, and it's going to get plowed appropriately. Is there any kind of letter or note that we can get back from them without, you know, for confirming how it's going to be done? And yeah, the planning board can submit a letter correctly. asking these questions and request okay. the response. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, I can prepare a letter like that if everyone wants to just email me individually their comments and I can put that together and send it to them. So I would request the Historical Commission be copied on that because that home is supposed on to that, be... On that letter? Well, the home is supposed to be preserved as part of the host community agreement so they should any changes to that lot potentially affect the structure. Uh, they, should be, they should at least be notified. Maybe they don't have any purview. Yeah. Um, can I ask one more question? Uh, what what was the discussion about the longevity of this solution? Um, it was kind of uh, just discussed as the solution for now. I don't believe there was any discussion about how long they intend this to last for, or what the uh, the thing that would change the situation would be. Um, it's kind of. The school decided that it was the best situation that they could think of for right now with, with partnership with Legacy Farms. Um, and do you know how, if the parents were included in that conversation? So the school is reaching out to the parents individually. They have some system where they can reach out to the parents of Legacy Farms, and they said they're going to do a straw poll. Basically, the majority wins. If the parents appro uh, approve of this, then they're going to do it. If the majority of the parents don't approve, then they're going to try and figure something else out. Um, okay, and what's the timing? That I couldn't nail down. I've asked about three times. <clears throat> well, excellent effort. And, and, yeah. <laughs> that. They said as soon as we get all the approvals that are needed. And what and approved? They the decided they are the approvals from the approvals. Right. The approvals are the approvals from the parents and essentially school committee. If there's anything that needs to be done on their on their behalf. Okay. I do have reps from the school committee. Would you? Do you mind coming forward and yeah, giving us the four one one? Good evening. So, um, just a quick response to, to the report that John gave. Because, Should you um, say your name? Sure, John Dellen, and Lee is the school committee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, one of the, the sort of tricky things is that it's really not in our hands. It's out of our hands as far as the district and the schools are concerned because the mass general law dictates where the buses can go. It's not like we don't feel like going into legacy farms. It's mass general law that dictates it. Chapter 68, Master of Law, Chapter 68, Section, I can't remember what I It just it. doesn't matter. <laughs> and so, I'm right. So just, just to reinforce the point, that it's not because we don't want to, it's because we can't. And the bus company cannot be compelled to break the law either. So we aren't really spearheading the effort because it's out of our hands. We want to help out the community and support and sort of be however we can, but we can't there's nothing that the school committee can do specifically to alleviate the situation until the road is a public road. And then the transportation routes can be redistricted and, and or re added whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. And then and then we can we can make something happen. But until that happens, we're there in a support role. We're not really there in a any other capacity. Um, you know, Carolyn's there because she wants to help out the families and the kids and you know support and solidarity but other than that, we can't do anything else. Um, it really falls on the in Roy's hands, into the developer's hands, and to um, the town's hands if they want to come up with a solution. There's so, no not to put too fine a point on it, the school committee is part of this one hot content, but right. I also understand that the select board is busily trying to right. not address it as well. Because it's your problem, is what I've been told, and I can pull up that email, but I'll skip that. Um, so, you know, congratulations to the planning board for at least bringing it to the table and making people talk about it because nobody wants it to be their problem. And we have upwards of 120 kids right. who They're are growing. not in a safe situation up there. Um, so I would submit that it's all of our problem to fix this. It is, it is. And I think that the, um, a number of residents, and I certainly won't speak for them, but they did come to the meeting, our meeting the other night, when the same report was given at our meeting. 
and they're not particularly enthused about this solution either. Who, I'm um, sorry, the residents up there are not particularly enthused about this solution? That was the response the that we meeting. received. I can't speak for all of That was yeah, the response yeah. we, we received that night. Um, what, what, so night what night was the meeting? Thursday. Thursday. Last Thursday? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, and quite ahead, a few Jay. folks, I, I, I don't know the number, but I want to say at least 10 people showed up. And I like had one spokesperson come up and speak in response to the issue. So. You know, it is, it's a problem, it's a big problem. There's lots of kids that need a safe place to get on the bus, but we can't compel the buses to go down the road. So what do we do? You know, and it's like a lose-lose situation right now. So has the school committee voted on this as a possible solution? We cannot vote on it because we have, the school bus will just stop on the public road. It's not like it needs a school committee vote. So I get that on this temporary solution to have a bus stop this way? It was a report given to us, but there was no vote about it. So I thought we just heard that the school committee insisted that, that uh, this was the solution. So the two representatives that we spoke to yeah. were working with Legacy Farms, and excuse me if I got no, this no, no, mistaken, okay. it, it was uh, the two groups presenting to the rest of us as if it was one solution that was worked out between them, okay. and we're just hearing about it. So okay. when I asked about what approvals are needed, I was told it was the school committee needs to, they, they didn't say what approvals were needed, but right, it says right. the school committee needs to reach out to the parents and make the decision about whether they're moving forward with this. If that's not how it was, and if it's purely legacy farms, then it's all in Roy's hands, but that's, uh, that's something. Chair? Um, yes. I have a statement. I think that this is a, a a pretty good short-term resolution if we can get there. Um, historically, it is the old Peach Street. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a full turnaround they can accomplish there, but it sounds much safer to me than the other situation with the corner of Franklin. Um, so, you've been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've seen, we've seen where, and it is, it's busy. I completely understand. Where the folks that live there are. Through the chair, can I ask the two people who have been there and in a, in a, representing the town, representing us, uh, your opinion? I wasn't there representing, I went to go check it out on my own. Okay. Well, was. you represent the town and, and the school company. Sorry. And you're an active person in this, in a way. In a way. More than I've been, which I thank you for. What are your opinions? Is, is it a relatively good idea, or better than what we have? Go ahead. I, I personally, I would say it's better than what is currently in place. Um, the area is large enough that it can easily fit what I was told was the max of 10 cars at any time. Uh, it can fit more than 10, but they said that there's not many they've seen it the most. Um, plenty of room to turn around if it's the area that they're talking about. And if they plow it and maintain it, it should be something that's you know, reasonably accessible at all times. They said they're gonna improve the um, entrance from East Main. The concerns that we had were that it really should be, since there's a, del a double yellow striped line on East Main there, it really should only be a right turn out of there, but it's likely not going to be that in practice because the police aren't going to be able to enforce that. Um, so, and if you went right to get back to Legacy Farms, you'd have to go all Without the way the and then all the way around. So uh, apparently it's going to be, um, probably going to get this mixed up, I think they said more of an issue in the afternoon than in the morning, or maybe it's going to be more of an issue in the morning than the afternoon, but one of them they said they're not concerned about is the other one. Morning. So uh, I don't know if there's going to be some kind of mitigation put in place to alleviate those concerns, but um, they didn't seem like too many people were concerned about 10 cars trying to access East Main from that parking lot at one time. Hold on, hold on. Yes. I just have a, an observation and a question. Is it, so I understand the school board didn't want to own this and the select board didn't want to own it. Um, the planning board did want to do something about it. And I'm, I'm curious, John, was any effort made to involve the planning board or any representation of the planning board in this discussion and brainstorm that came up with the current solution that's been um, proposed? There was some back and forth via email not involving the planning board, but we were copied on some of the emails, but there was a lot of discussion behind the scenes that we privy to. Uh, we were invited to see the site and hear the presentation, um, but coming up with the idea, we weren't involved. I wasn't involved. So I would like to, uh, Mary. Okay, um, I have a question, and this is regarding um, the, the um, opportunity, if any, 
um, to change bus routes mid-year. Um, if, this is just total theoretical, if during the school year um, we were able to get an acceptance of the road through lots of different hoops, um, would uh, the school committee be able to work with the, um, the bus company to change the, the bus routes or would it have to wait until the following school year? I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. Um, but I don't, I, I, I believe that if the road is then public, then we would be able to work with the bus company, but I don't know that that's absolutely true. As long as it's a public road, I think we can make adjustments to the transportation if it's deemed necessary, mm -hmm. but we can't. adjustments yeah. in the past. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And then just comment in general to the rest of the board is that, um, Again, the school year has started. <laughs> there has to be a short-term solution as well as our medium or long-term solution, mm -hmm. and I think that this is a decent short-term solution, however it, it came about. Um, <laughs> um, and I do believe, personally, I believe that um, we need to continue to push the longer-term solution, and perhaps not for a special town meeting, but definitely for our next annual town meeting and get this solved on a permanent basis by then. I find myself agreeing with you pretty well, Mary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just one comment. I was wondering why they wouldn't have the turn off of the off of legacy farm lot instead of going onto a busy road and then they come back and go against traffic. It seems kind of funky. There's a retention pond right there. Oh, there is? Okay. Retention what? A retention, retention pond. Um, anybody yeah, down? Any question from the oh. first? What's that? I, I, I'm not sure if I've heard the answer about do you think this is a good short term solution? Well, I think it's the best that we can come up with right now, right? But I don't. Not to put you on the spot, but in general. No, I mean, I, that's the thing. This has been going on for a really long time. This isn't something new. And lots of folks way smarter than me have been looking for solutions and have come up with nothing. I don't so know I feel like this I know that that's true, Jen. <laughs> You're going to have to go with that to real definitely. And I think that in terms of ownership, to Gary's point, you know, it's it's not a function. I mean, the school has been aware of us and has looked for solutions for the last couple of years. Yeah. But when your hands are tied by laws, your hands are tied by laws, we can't spend $200,000 on one bus, you know, a private bus. I don't think the town's going to... <laughs> That's not going to fly in the town to spend, you know, four times as much on one private bus. Um, there, that was an option that we looked into, but it's about four times as much as a regular school bus, a private bus. Um, so we've been looking for things, but there's not two years and no viable solution. So I feel like this is the, the best that, for now, we can come up with that's going to solve as many of the problems as we can. But to Mary's point, you know, we need a long-term solution. and. Um, I don't know what the timeline is for approving these roads as public ways, but that really is the when we can have a long-term solution as soon as those roads are approved as public ways. Okay. okay. Deb, I'm coming to you. Amy, did you have anything? I generally agree with um, Mary that I think this is better than what they have now, right. but it's not yeah. a permanent solution. Not ideal, but the best Deb, thing can happen. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a little concerned about um, the the access, as David was, um, onto a major road. That road can be extremely busy, um, both in the morning. The morning it's going in the opposite direction, so they're going to have to hang a, hang a left pretty darn quickly because people come down that road relatively um, in, with high speed. Um, I, I just haven't had an opportunity to look at if there's space between the stone wall and the retention pond. I just pulled it up on the map. Um, and, but um, I did drive by and I saw the sign and I knew exactly what it was for um, without even hearing this, this um, information. And I thought it was a good solution because it is a big enough area. My, my concern is that egress. And, and I, would, I, I, I would hope that we could take a little bit of a closer look at that. So Jen, I, it, our frustration is not directed at you. We understand no, that I we're all you know, in this together. Um, I have a, a question. Did Chief Lee sign off on those kids walking across Franklin and then back across Legacy Farms North? Was he at the meeting you went to? And he, he thought was. that was a great idea? Did he say anything? He didn't say it. I don't remember him saying anything. 
specifically about the crosswalk, but he was there and we had a discussion about it. And uh, how about the cars pulling in and pulling out on that street in, in great numbers? So that's what we talked about. Um, so it's, it, it doesn't seem like it's that many. I understand 10 cars can be a lot at a certain point in time, but I was assured it was 10 cars max going to that parking lot at any one time. By who? Uh, by, um, I think it was Eric, can you think that was his name? A representative from Legacy Farms, who has looked at uh, the Franklin situation. They told me that. Okay. Um, so we did talk about putting signs up saying right turn only, uh, but Chief Lee said he doesn't really see that being enforced, so it's going to be tough to actually make that happen. Um, the next item on our agenda may help with that. Are we, do we have somebody to speak to that? That's also me. <laughs> you know what, John? Welcome to Hawkins and welcome to the ways of this world. But I don't want to end. Hold that thought. I don't want to end this conversation. Should we move yeah. Huh? Should we move into that scene? No, <laughs> no. We're just going to set a little fire underneath them. <laughs> Mina, welcome. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank the planning board for having taken this up first and foremost. I think it's a very important issue. It involves kids, um, and there's a huge risk involved with the way things are set up right now. And the school committee completely understands it. So I, I think Gary, you were trying to make a point about you know, the ownership. Um, as Jen said, there are certain limitations with which we are working, but I don't think we are uh, walking away from it. We are looking to partner. What I would like to see happen is a joint meeting perhaps with the planning board, with the select board, with the school committee, and possibly the parents. Because I don't think that it's fair that we come up with these solutions and uh, you know, later find out, you go through all this process, looks like you spend a lot of time, Dr. Kavanaugh and Susan Rothmick, um, you know, take the time out, go to all those sessions, and then the parents are saying, this is not a viable solution for us. I think it's important to have that open dialogue. Um, of course, there's only so much one can go, given the uh, challenges that we have in our town with the growth and uh, the financial constraints that we have. So we need to be mindful and we need to request that of the parents too, that there will have to be some give and take. So that's my hope. Um, and I think representatives from the school committee would be willing to join um, such a meeting. But knowing that we have certain limitations on our end, we're happy to support. Dr. Kavanaugh has already expressed that she's happy to do a survey with the parents through Google Forms. The, to the extent that the school committee and the school administration can support, we will be very willing to do it. Um, okay. yeah. It is fair. Yeah. I, I actually really appreciate that, that approach, Mina, and it, it's what was rattling around in, in my mm -hmm. head as well. Um, I'm a little, I, you know, right now I'm not thinking with my planning board hat. I, I'm thinking about myself as a mom with all my kids trucking down there. Um, I'm not sure I picture it. Um, I, I, actually, I actually support it as a short-term solution, but I really think that circumventing the review process is a big mistake. Um, and certainly that the parents weren't there to weigh in on it um, is affrontive. I'm not blaming you guys. I'm just saying that absolutely parents should have been involved in that conversation. And it feels to me um, like peop some people are practicing avoidance in this process. And we need to get everybody together and get a solution that we can all feel is safe and tenable at least for this school year as we work for a more permanent solution. Um, so I really appreciate the suggestion of the meeting. I don't know how other board members are feeling, but um, circumventing the site plan, uh, you know, this, this, the review process is, is not an option, I think, is even supportable. Even if it's a temporary measure, there's other factors, other groups, but I, I totally agree with Mary only other uh, point that I wanted to make, Mary, you asked a question about uh, being able to change stops. I think we had brought that up at the school committee meeting and the parents' response. Of course, within the purview of what is a public road, obviously the buses would fly there. But that's not something you want to change a couple of times in a year. Right? So whatever it is, the solution, temporary solution we choose, we should try and stick to it for the rest of the year. Okay, that's the preference. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree at all because it's a, a it, you, if there's a if there's a supportable solution, we should drive with it for this school year at least. 
And if it, if it worked for longer, that's okay too, right? If it was a solution that worked for longer, that would be great. Um, I'm wondering um, how it is that we didn't get invited to that meeting. To what meeting? The, the site, site visit? Mm -hmm. um, it was scheduled via email? I, I don't know. Certainly, it was well known that I had a vested interest in that. Uh, the town manager asked Elaine I'll to be schedule speaking it. To so him directly. Thank you. I don't know who they told to. Perfect. Um, okay, so go ahead with the light. Sure. Ten feet so, from where we're talking about, right? right. So, um, okay. I feel that several. Um, unless you, unless you have opinions on the light. Well, I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> so I fielded several phone calls uh, recently about the traffic light that's at that intersection, or the lack of a traffic light that's at that intersection, uh, and looked back at the decision for uh, Legacy Farms, and in the decision. There's a condition that states if uh, a traffic light is determined to be necessary, which I believe Beta has determined it to be necessary, and uh, Legacy Farms as an organization has uh, acquiesced to, um, they are to install the traffic light within six months of that determination. And if they are unable to do it in six months, they can come before the board to request another six month extension. Um, so we've received 75% drawings last week we're not gonna be able to internally meet on them because uh, John Westerling is out of town for this week. So we're gonna try and meet early next week to discuss and provide comments back to BHB so that they can move forward or make amendments as needed. Um, but seeing as how I've been here now for five months, I don't believe that this was brought before the board a month before I got here. I think that they may need to get an extension from the planning board based on that decision. So I can reach out to Roy see if you can submit a letter to request that. Uh, but I have, like I said, I fielded calls from residents of Legacy Farms North and South uh, asking when this light is gonna go in, asking for a timeline. Um, so I think I can say, hopefully within six months, uh, if the planning board agrees to grant that extension. But um, we haven't really discussed the plans yet, so I don't know what the process is to get that installed and what you need to do at the state level. So I'm, I'm not super clear that it, will be six months, but I um, just want to get your guys' feedback on that. And I think tying this to the recent, uh, the, the previous item, once there's a stoplight there, I think mm -hmm. getting on to Main Street might be a little bit easier mm -hmm. during the red lights. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe it won't be an issue to park and access Main Street uh, at that site um, as it is now, but I don't know how much of a solution it's gonna be. Um, remind me again, John, who was at the meeting out there for about the bus stop? Two school. Yep, I got that. Yep. Uh, chiefly. Chiefly. Elaine, myself. The town manager who called this meeting didn't bother to go? Uh, I don't know. I, was I, he there? I don't, he wasn't there. I don't okay. know if he sent Elaine as his representative or if he was Perfect. otherwise occupied. Um, and Chuck Cadlick, the director of municipal inspections. <coughs> uh, I think that was it. John, oh, and um, Dave Del Torrio facilities manager. John Westerling was supposed to be there, but I think he got held up with something else. Okay. All right, well, we've exhausted yes, sure. Yeah. I'm wondering, is the six month um, lead time, is that a mandatory six month or can we change that? And can we find out who does need to go to and how long that process takes in the state? Yep, so uh, the six month is stated in the decision that it's six months and then an extension of six months. So I guess they could request a modification of that decision to get more than six months. Um, or less than six months? I don't think they're gonna request that modification, <laughs> but the planning board may, may wanna yes. initiate that modification themselves. Um, and then I think once we have the internal meeting between Beta, uh, John Westling, and myself to discuss the plans and bring those any concerns or edits up to uh, VHP and Legacy Farms. We can ask that question of what's the process moving forward from here, how long it's going to take, what other approvals you need, and we can get a better picture of doing that. And then the other question that uh, might be forwarded to them at that time would be can it be done in winter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you we'll say yes, it can we'll be done. We'll have to ask that. Yeah, to ask that. This clarification through the chair. Bill, do you remember off the top of your head uh, the timing that we spoke about the last time this came up? I thought it was like maybe uh, once I get the plans, it could be done within two months. 
which would have been the summertime, which just passed. But. Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't, I don't know that we talked about the time, the timeline for that. I mean, if they're only at seventy-five percent, we're going to review the plans. Um, so they're they're looking for comments, and then they got to get back up. They got to get their, uh, uh, another iteration of the plan. And I don't know where they are with their approval from. So that's the big that's the big question. And then one more question through the chair. Historically, I don't think any of us were here last time. The light in front of the library and the light in front of um, School Street on West Main Street. Uh, those involved working with the state and stuff. Were you involved in those? No. It was a while back. All right, so uh, what's the proposal? Should we have them on the agenda to get an update if they have to add when they, are you gonna, you're going to see if they have an ex, need an extension and then they'd have to be on the So agenda? I think at this point they need an extension they because they, I mean, it's been more than six months since it's been determined that it's necessary, right? It, it's not very close. I think, yeah. I think they, it was right after the trails decision that we, we re reviewed the, the new traffic path. Yeah. So I can rec I can tell Roy to submit a uh, request to extend. It can just be a letter, I would assume. Okay. Um, and you guys can tell me if you want them to come in person. Um, Probably should get an update on the status. Sure. Okay. sure. So uh, kind of tied to that is uh, one of the requests of one of the residents was how to best get these status updates across to the, the public. And so I suggested keeping this as a continuing item on the administrative tasks kind of like the uh, bus issue yeah, so perfect. that if there's anything I said EHOP usually provides an update uh, yeah. the week after and this is a good way for the public rather than mailing updates all the time or updating the website which seems to be a bit challenging. Uh, Sounds like a plan we do have to move forward. I think <coughs> a really good idea uh, there are several outstanding legacy farms issues so I don't know if we want to also add the sidewalk because it's an item that's always at the bottom of the agenda to just clump them together. Yeah, I, yeah. Are we tracking that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sidewalk. I mean, there's the house too, but I don't know if that's more under the select board purview. Yeah, I don't know. So. Okay, just at so top level, we want to make sure we communicate with the historic commission and get their uh, feedback on this plan to use that to gravel that. Um, and then um, I think we're in agreement that we would ideally like to have a meeting with the parents, the school committee, and all the involved uh, constituency groups to, s to uh, make sure that there's buy-in, particularly from the parents. Um, we can. Do you want to ask the school committee to do a survey monkey? I, that's a good idea. So that would help, at least to survey the parents whatever, in whatever way that it is easiest. So I believe they're already doing that. They, uh, you are they, they already have a plan to do to survey the parents about um, up or down on this idea? The proposed, yeah, there was, there was, I can't remember if I had to look back in the notes if it's survey or a meeting, but I'll, I'll look back and confirm it. Either way, parents are being brought into the picture. All right, I think we got to move on. Um, uh, go ahead. But just may on, on the traffic light, this is, I'm yep. speaking for myself, but I, yep. I think we do want to prioritize that and accelerate as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Particularly with the school bus issues, it seems like the traffic light might help, and that's something that, that, that is within our control and is within our jurisdiction. So, just in your communications with Mr. McDowell, I just ask that we prioritize that and keep that moving as quickly as possible. Sure. All right, so there is a, an item that we were going to talk about the new sidewalk survey, but we were uh, sure we were going to postpone that, and with John not being here, we're definitely sure we're not. Um, the Growth Study Committee membership and discussion. Um, congratulations to Amy, who's the new chair. Um, Finn Perry will be the new vice chair, and uh, I am going to be clerking for the committee. Um, do you want to just briefly explain the alternate? Do you know the alternate issue? Oh, I only from what you said last year yeah. that it wasn't quite posted properly the way we were going to pick alternates. Yeah. So alternates weren't advertised. Okay. Only the uh, positions were advertised, and then it was. I don't even know how to have a determination by the board that there would be alternates and no one caught it. So 
Okay. The alternate positions themselves should be advertised as alternate positions. So we're going to do that. Yes. And um, and uh, identify that the alternates will have. Um, I'm throwing this this question that will have voting privileges if um, regular members are absent to fill the, the quorum. And we should specify a voting order because if one regular, if there are two alternates and right. one, only one regular member is gone, we right. have to which alternate will be the voting alternate. Yeah. So when we choose the alternates, we should have a priority order, I guess. Okay. Alternate one, alternate two. Yeah. 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 Um, is there anything else that we have to specify about alternates? If they're going to have a different like no what, what was the so right now everyone has been appointed for the life of the project yeah, yeah. so it could be the same yeah yeah I can't I can't imagine why you wouldn't do it that way so we don't have to vote that you're just gonna post that and then we'll um, select our, our lucky candidates <laughs> hopefully smoothly and again um, also the committee the girls study committee um, in its discussions, um, would really like to invite um, members of the school committee, the select board, and the appropriation committee to participate at any time. So we, uh, the committee, discussed and envisioned ex officio positions so that it can be anybody that they select to come. It doesn't have to be a member of the select board, of select board but it can be. Um, it could also be a member of the professional staff if they were wanted to send somebody. Um, so I put that out to the planning board um, uh, to consider three more seats that wouldn't necessarily be voting, so would not interfere with the quorum. Um, but we want to make sure that we um, we welcome and invite and and have those participants as part of it. Um. Well, this is that was certainly something that we had tossed about during mm -hmm. the discussion mm -hmm. of the growth study committee and how it was going to be made up. And I, I'm in favor, particularly appropriations. I think it's necessary to have a dedicated, you know, uh, liaison position. I don't know what you want to call it, um, but um, is that is that your intention? Is that um, this committee would ask for one person to be designated or just please come if you can. Um, <laughs> what do you think? I think the growth study committee had voted unanimously to request um, liaison roles for select, con or select board, uh, school committee, and appropriations committee, and they asked the planning board to consider posting those. Okay. Yeah, so, so yeah, I would, I would be in favor of that. And, um, and I think that that is certainly something that was in our discussion during the formation of this committee. Um, and we actually at the time <laughs> uh, said, let's form the committee with this smaller number and let the committee discuss it, which they have, and then come back to us. So this is, is certainly within what we were considering all along. Anybody else? Any thoughts? I, I agree, it worked out well for the Center School Reuse Committee having four select from the board mm -hmm. in particular yeah. circumstance, of course, so that it's uh, useful. Yeah, and I think a designated member then is aware that they can put it in their schedule and that, you know, it's their, it's their part that they're doing for the committee. I think that's a nice idea to have to be a committed member. So um, I'll entertain a, mo a motion from this committee to support, to add those three um, liaison slots that we identified as ex officio positions from one designee from the select board, one from the school committee, and one from the appropriation committee. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by yeah. saying no. John has a question. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Are they going to be, they're not going to be voting positions? I don't, I think that we envision not so that it, because typically um, paid staff, for example, if they were coming, wouldn't, wouldn't vote in a, in a meeting. And would they be designated by the board or they'd be designated by the board and then require an approval by the planning board? There would be no required approval by the planning board. It's, it's whoever those boards or committees. So they would um, essentially do the That's my, board. that's my vision. Isn't um, um, Mr. Manon, isn't he already in, from the Appropriations Committee, so he already has a representative? Yeah, but the Appropriations Committee will pick 
they'll have their own no, process. No, no, no. He's not appointed. He's not, he's not appointed. No. Um, the appropriation committee is, is unique in that they can't serve on other boards and committees unless it's this way as an ex officio um, role. Okay. So I think that answers the question as well, not any other members. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would definitely, some, or, I mean, or whoever the appropriation committee sent. you can't have someone from the appropriations committee. Yeah, committee that, so. that's, that's correct. That's right. So just to be clean, non money members. Yeah. But we um, want their voice. Yeah, but we don't have to approve it. They, they get to pick, just like the chamber picked their representatives. Okay. So I'll reach out to them and request these designees. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Yes, that would be great. Um, I'll explain a motion on the minutes from July 22nd. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? The copy that we had said draft not finished. Is that because yeah, it's finished? It Did is finished. Sign okay. Off. Just checking. <laughs> um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Awesome. All right. So we are going to have folks from Whisper Way first, if you can come forward. And while they're coming forward, I don't know if anybody else is here that came in for the, the Blueberry Lane discussion. And I know a few people coming in late. That's not going to be on the agenda tonight. So we've already made that decision and postponed. So. Is there a new date for that? The 28th of October. 28th of October. Yep. There's plenty of seats over here, too. <laughs> John, take us away. Through the chair. Yes. Uh, Kobe just uh, reminded me that that hearing was not open. To continue. The what? We talked about it. Didn't officially open all the all the public hearings. Ah. Uh, so we need to there do you that. go. I will entertain a motion to open all the public hearings that were on our agenda. Thank you. So moved. All. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those. Any opposed? Any abstentions? You were right, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I'm not so you have to start the meeting. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> um, um, okay, so um, so we'll need to vote. Um, so that one is all set. So we voted to extend. Okay, but but that one has been continued. We don't have to address it again, right? Okay. Um, Toby, you gotta run for planning board. <laughs> um, okay, whisper away. You want to just briefly introduce where we are? So um, we have uh, addressed all of Phil's uh, comments yeah. and uh, have a clean bill of health from him, I believe. Um, it's pretty much the, the same. Um, there were no little, little details that we sorted out um, over the, since the last meeting. So um, we're hoping that Obviously, if there's any other questions that uh, the board has, we're happy to try and address them. But um, hoping to get an approval. Perfect. And Phil, you're square with it? Uh, yes, uh, we had a discussion with Dan um, in the process. We back and forth relative to the turnarounds for fire trucks yes. and driveways. He mentioned that. They really aren't, um, they haven't designed each of the sites so that that, that house location may move. Yep. So, uh, so we recommend that you include a condition that for any shared driveway, particularly, you know, when they go to construct them, that you pr they provide a plan uh, for the fire department and myself to review. Okay. And that's certainly absolutely true. Okay. Um, John, take us away on any comments you have. <coughs> um, so we went back and forth between beta the applicant and myself with the decision, the draft decision. Um, the draft decision itself is written as one document. There are two permits that are needed. Yeah. So it's the special permit for the USLPD and it's the definitive subdivision plan approval. Um, I've gone and just written them as one. 
The board can use that as a framework to uh, identify findings and conditions and then have me split it into two. Um, Kobe and I have been talking, I guess usually it's done as two because if somebody were to appeal, they would be appealing both when they may only want to appeal the special permit. Um, but on the other hand, if you don't get a special permit, you can't really do the subdivision. So I don't know if it necessarily matters, but it could be cleaner to just split it into two if the board would like me to do that. Uh, happy to do that. Um, but other than that, I think everything has been addressed. Uh, Beta has signed off on pretty much everything. We've included that. I believe we included that condition into the decision, but if not, I, will, I can edit that to include it. Um, and if, I, if anyone has any questions, happy to answer them. Um, just for the public's um, information, we did walk through this pretty extensive list of, of waivers and we, um, we pounded through those ahead of time. Um, and in so doing, we, we walked through a lot of the issues that I think um, might have been addressed on the agenda. So there are, there are some open items on the agenda that detail discussion and public comment. Um, the public is always welcome to um, comment here. I don't think we've ever had anybody from the public comment on, on this hearing. So um, if you are here to speak um, or ask questions or, or comment on this, please make sure you make yourself known as we um, go through the agenda items probably pretty quickly. We do want to um, make sure that if somebody from the public is here, they are heard, however. Um, should they just raise their hand now? Or? It, is anybody here to speak on the whisper way from the public? Okay, so make sure that you um, will, as we go through it, we'll make sure that we leave time for that. Um, okay, so uh, do any members of the board have any questions or issues on the vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow, truck traffic flow, or emergency vehicle access? This is agenda item number 5.1. Um, yes. We're still, excuse me, through the chair, Mary or not, through Two Trees Road. We're still on this way with those yes. discussions. And um, it was just in light of what came up on the bus issue with Legacy Farms. Uh, I've attended other meetings on Whisper Way. I didn't have any discussion at that point, but I was just curious about where the buses would be handled here and is there adequate places for the students to the buses to get. Question. Sure. So, so this would not be a public way. Um, it's all right. It, it is. It is a public it will way. Be. It will be eventually, but until it's a public way, the yeah. the students would be picked up on the on Wood Street. The buses would would come approach. Correct me if I'm wrong. But would yes. approach on Wood Street, um, and uh, would necessarily by by um, convention would. Uh, approach on the side of the road that is Whisper Way is on. They would, they very rarely have children crossing Wood Street, and I could be wrong, but I, I don't think that they, they plan that. They, they loop up and down Wood Street, um, so they would, the children would wait at the, at the base um, because the bus would approach on Wood Street. Um, traffic would stop in both directions when the bus is picking up children or, or letting them go. There's a total of 12 homes here, as opposed to Casey Farms is a... It's hundreds. <laughs> hundreds of students. <laughs> Again, so, just because of the no, product. It's a, it's no, I, I, it is a good question. Thank you. Um, so, um, any questions on 5.2 intended uses? Any questions on stormwater management or comments? I'm going through the agenda, the um, outline. I'm sorry, thank you. So I just recall one, one item that was a little bit out, uh, still needed some discussion was the clearing of the, uh, you know, phasing our, the phasing plan. Oh, okay. So uh, they provided a phasing plan. Um, so I think maybe there should be some discussion in terms of how we activate the next phase and or just make sure you know, we don't have the same issues that we have with legacy, uh, where there's a lot of, a lot of sudden moving, so. Okay. Is there a condition about the phasing plan? Okay. It was, the phasing plan is included in the, um, in the set that was last submitted. Okay. Um, 
If you can just talk to it briefly, that would be helpful. Six, seven, and eight. comments or questions from the board? Um, I would concur with Mary um, to sort of forward that conversation a little bit as to where the parent, there's, it's, if you average two students per household, and you know, you never know, you don't get more or less, um, you've got maybe 18 kids coming either middle school, elementary, or high school. The question is where are the parents going to park for the kids? Is there adequate space because it's all wetlands at that entry? Um, has there been any thought to that? Um, we haven't thought about the school bus, school bus much, but uh, I mean, typically they stop in the road and, um, you know, they, they stop traffic both ways and they load the bus and off they go. Um, uh, so the question is, is there enough room for them to stay off the road while they're waiting in those locations? Um, and can we get maybe some information back 
that is so detailed. There's there's no there's absolutely no room where that entrance is because of the wetlands for us to say widen the pavement in order to do so. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about a maximum say of 18 cars, um, and I can't imagine that you're going to have 18 18 kids. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 12, 10 so, cars. You're saying a max. If there's 10 households. Six, 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 seven. Right. So the, my guess is that except for the very younger uh, grades, that the bus, even when this is accepted, is still going to stop at Wood Street. Um, it's not going to. That's come. that's my assumption as yeah, well. Yeah, I don't think they got yeah. Yeah. So um, I think as you, if you go through town, any of the bus stops, I'm sure, are picking up easily 10 households worth of children, and they don't have you don't have bus stops all over town. Yeah. So I honestly don't think it's an issue. I, I, I don't think we're going to make a change to this plan for the bus stop. Um, from, from my perspective, it is absolutely safer for the bus to be on Wood Street and stop the traffic there than it is to have it loop in in any way and potentially not stop traffic But there. what I'm thinking is um, being a compressor drive, which is another cul-de-sac type of community, um, where we have 12 to 13 homes, um, on any given day, I would much prefer my kid, when he was that age, when they were that age, that they were up on a sidewalk, not on the there is There is a sidewalk all the way down this way, to which street. Okay. And that's on the right-hand side of the road, so the bus would... It, it's on, yeah. It's, it's, so the it's bus would come past the, the street, road. so nobody could get out, so that would be safer. Okay. Thanks for that. Yep. Um, so stormwater, you're satisfied with the phasing as long as it's part of the condition? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so John, you'll put that in the conditions? Yep. Um, site lighting, I'm just going to look up and down and see if anybody... Um, um, this, uh, if I go ahead, yes. Um, the site lighting just wanted to confirm that we had had some discussion about, um, you know, driveway entrance lighting. Basically, I don't remember the terminology people were using, oh, so but, we but wave, it was wave the need for street lights in, as long as there would be wayfinding lights at the driveway. There you go, wayfinding right. lights. Yeah. So it's in here. Okay. Well, so is that in there? There is a condition of low level. Uh, I forget how I worded it, but. I specified for the purpose of assisting emergency services and finding addresses. Good. And, that, and that's in the condition? Thanks. That's a condition. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. This is just a continued thought on that. I just don't want to pass it before I forget it. For that sidewalk, because this is a phased project, um, is there a way we can have a conversation um, about the phasing and about that sidewalk so that we don't run into the same situation? that we are with Legacy Farms, where they, they, so they have a sidewalk that is clean. We, we um, would build a sidewalk from, with phase one. With phase one, okay. Yeah, and when the first lots get released, the sidewalk will be in. Okay. At, at least down for the last 200 feet, you know, across the wetland and, and out to Wood Street. But they might not be done in front of the house. Okay, and at that time, would it be the responsibility of the town to plow it? No. no. Not until it's accepted. They will never plow. They would never plow. do the sidewalk plowing. That's, that's my guess. They don't plow the sidewalk. 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 So it's only for the, dangerous. Only for the yeah. kids who are within walking distance of school. True, true. Something to be aware of. Yeah. Not every kid within walking distance has a sidewalk, no. though. Okay. No, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. It's true. Um, okay. Uh, site lighting is okay? Yep. Utilities, water, sewer, everybody's fine with that? Okay. Um, no dumpsters, no parking lot layout. Um, did we even talk about snow? Do we? Yeah, so not to, snow belabor this. not to belabor this, but so while it's a private road, it's going to get plowed privately, correct? Yes. Okay. And in that, we will consider, can we, should we write it into considerations? And should we write it so that they consider the fact that there will be children standing there, whether they're four to six, 
so it leaves them in place where parents can drop them safely. What does that mean, Deb? What I'm saying is that well, this is a private road. It's not accepted by the town. I got that. They're going to privately plow it yep. and provide um, a six square foot area where the children can stand. It's going to be a sidewalk. Right. right, but it has to be plowed. They will provide a plowed area for them to stand because it's a problem on right. Crestwood. It's a problem on Crestwood. I'm not making this up. It's a problem on Crestwood Drive, even with the town as we have it, because we have these high drifts of snow yeah. that are plowed yep. and no one can see. So yep. I'm just making sure in the interim that they are appropriately um, we'll aware. We'll make sure there's an area for the okay. kids to stand. And, yep. Um, so is that a condition? That in addition to the plowing, they would normally do. There'll be a small area. I don't think that needs to be a no. separate condition. I don't either. I mean, you're going to have to, He's while you nice. maintain it, you'll have to plow the sidewalks for the kids. While you don't maintain it, it'll be up to the residents. So it's, it's, I mean, I think it's enough to be in the minutes mm -hmm. that, I mean, yeah. he's, he's obviously working hard to make it a nice environment. So. Any questions on noise? Um, crosswalks and sidewalks. So the sidewalk we have um, at least down to Wood Street is included in phase one. Yes. And then the whole place will be sidewalked yes. when it's complete. On one side. On mm -hmm. one side. Yeah. Any questions? Any more? Okay. No, sorry. Okay. Just the team. <laughs> That's okay. No, usually the sidewalk. Sidewalk. I was ready for the sidewalk. <laughs> 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 I've used them all up. Um, uh, is there any issues with signage? Not that I know of. It was just, uh, uh, excuse me, yeah. in the chair. <laughs> um, there's going to be signage for the trailheads um, and where the parking is. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. actually it's agreed to move that sign, um, work with the uh, hall to come up with a better location for it. Okay. Be buried down. It'll be more close to the road. Okay. To the new road. Okay. Um, so, is it, that's not part of our conditions, the sign? can be. It's not. I, I know it can be, but I don't know that it needs to be because you have an arrangement with Paul. I would agree to go with Paul. And I feel like. It's on the Paul property, I think. Yeah, I feel I like it, we want to just leave that. It could be part of the con uh, conservation restriction that they put on, that they deed over to Halt. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be a planning board. So. Yeah. Um, solar panels, alternative energy? Kind of wooded in there. Try. It's really hilly. <laughs> yeah, just care about the signage. If, you, oh. if there was going to be a permanent sign at the entrance of the road, we haven't seen that yet, right? You oh, come you mean like, a, like a sub subdivision identification sign? I, I actually wasn't planning on it. No, I think it's fine, but if you would come back for approval if you wanted okay. to do that, right? All right. Or go to design review board. So just a street sign that's there already. That's already there, right? <laughs> So if you can, if you put an additional sign in, you come back before design review board. We'll do. Um, anybody with questions on uh, solar panels? Yes, please. Yeah. So, um, being as twenty nineteen, have you guys considered that in your plans? Um, we haven't considered them in the plan, other than we would like to encourage solar panels on the houses and um, we haven't done it as of yet on the new construction but um, we plan to look into it we, we have the ability to site the houses properly while we're exactly before we get going so mm -hmm. that's on our list of things to do Great. if people are interested in solar panels we'll be happy to help them well the best time to do it is when you're building the house it's the most affordable time you right. know yeah. it makes the value of the house more increase as well. It's actually part of the building code now that uh, all houses have to be solar ready. Um, if they, there, there are exemptions, but um, just so you all know. Mm, good. Thank you. Um, additional um, discussion on impacts on schools, municipal services, um, and the value of neighboring residential properties. So make the highway 495 more. Right. <laughs> um, I don't have any particular current concerns, but I just think it would always be a good practice of ours to notify the school department about how many new homes we yeah. approved so yeah. they're be expecting them. Yeah. Um, and uh, the fire chief is here as always and is um, 
is satisfied with what we've done here? I am actually even active at all for the to take on the idea of for the driveways, for the common driveways to sprinkle those houses. That really is the first step in having a model that can lower the heavy manpower intensive calls that we go to um, because it starts to uh, initiate the life safety aspect of the before we even get there. So uh, that hasn't been a strong push for that before. So let's give a lot of credit for the long to that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, any other comments or questions on 5.12? Um, 5.13, um, town department and boards and committees comments not covered above. I don't think we have any of them. All right. Um, any additional new comments, questions, information? Um, there was, there is something in the conditions um, related to <coughs> Working on the parking for horse trailers. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. I saw that too. So Which I just were... you know wanted to bring it up and just you know. Well, okay. So the last time uh, Jane and I went and looked at the site without the loop road, um, that there is a way to to get horse trailers in there, but I think uh, it, and it would be to to widen an area that is along Wood Street. And it would be on the, I think that, well, I know it would be on, on the town layout. The town layout is huge there, um, for whatever reason. Probably, I don't know why it is so big. Maybe because 495 influenced it in some way. But um, we could widen Wood Street, like a few of, an area off of Wood Street, mm -hmm. and you'd be able to park a couple, I think a couple of rigs there. But um, I, I, you weren't, I remember the model, and you weren't too pleased with that location. But I mean, I'd certainly be willing to look at it again. And, uh, you know. It's not the best, but we wouldn't go out and look at it again. Yeah. But, I mean, I think it could work. Then, um, and the other thing would be to widen that common drive and have it beside the common drive. But then you On the far, the two, the two, two those yeah. two lots? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 So it would be in here. Yeah. And um, it'd be pretty much the same as, as just widening up down here. Um, maybe it would be off, of the, again, we, we can look at that as well, Jane, but, um, so then that would require backing out, you know, in, remember we talked about yeah. that as well, then you'd be backing the trailers out. And, oh. I mean, you can have someone help you back it up and all that, and you have people eyeballing, but I think it's- Is that it's, just a flat grass spot? It is pretty flat, but it's, that road's pretty busy. No, I mean, could we back the horse trails? Right? If we pull up to the side here, we can we just back here? No. 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 They've all been in uh, the forest. Oh. So, this is kind of a slope here, too, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a lot of it's, it's, it's too slow. But, um, I saw it in the conditions in your draft so decision, right? Yeah. So if I may just clarify that whole issue. Yep. It was in the previous decision. It was. I left it in highlighted because I was unfamiliar oh. with it. And Ron and I discussed and basically he was saying he wasn't really proposing it this time, but I had already sent the decision out to you guys. So I left okay. it in there to discuss, but it doesn't have to be included. Okay. Yeah. So that is, yeah, that is uh, one of the reasons I raised it is because we hadn't been discussing it within this plan, this new right. plan. And, right. and I just wondered whether or not it's at all feasible at this point. Um, so, and um, the, the whole idea of backing out trailers no, onto Wood Street is that. pretty awful. But yeah. I can work with Ron and we can make that area down on Wood Street wide enough so we can safely get off the road and load okay. and unload the horses and walk okay. off. That, yeah, so is if, you know, well that's safer than nothing at all, <laughs> I guess. Um, well, it's yeah. beautiful. Right. That he's developed are just lovely. Yeah. Um, it's a unique piece of property, and I just hate this piece. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can work all together. That's okay. Fun. It, it doesn't, and, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't need to be a condition in our decision, but I did want to discuss it. But, you know, I certainly leave that to people. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, can I ask? Um, I thought that the existing one was on the other side of the road. Is over on the other side. 
required to stay in. It is. Yes. The existing parking area. Parking area. Yes. Now, for, for a while, I thought we weren't going to touch it. No, we're not. We're not. Okay. We're just going to make sure that there's good access off of the new paved road because it will be, be great. It's slightly different. Um, so the, but there's no the place to turn the tracks around. That's right. never where the horses were going to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's never, the that's never where the horses were going to be. The horses were always going to be. The horse trail is on the other side that connects to horse horse yeah. trails on so that the, side. The, the parking area is just a gravel area. Yeah. And, but you can turn around and it functions pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen so, half a dozen cars in there. So, I wish I had to walk down, of course. Yeah, Ron, we just walk at the entrance. And so, Ron, how do you feel about including something about that in the conditions or not? In out on the, out on the road? Yeah, what you were just talking about. Um, well, I, I, I don't know that you should include it as a condition just because it, it would be within the right of way. And I'm, I'm not sure there's going to be approvals he's going to have. I, I think it's going to have to it's it's going to have to get approved by somebody. Right. Because it's 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 more than likely going to be on town land. Okay. Yeah. So, What's the number? What page is that one? Page nine. Is it nine? Well, two sixty and everything. Yeah. Two sixty. Page three hundred fifty-two and our two sixty. So so in two sixty. And also. Muriel, it's, it's kind of a shoot from the hip thing on Jane's part, whether she wants to, you know, whether she thinks it's going to be safe. And no, I, I agree. That's why I asked the I question. Kind of, you know, but I'm willing to. So I appreciate that there's a willingness to look at that as an opportunity because this, you know, this is a unique opportunity. Um, but I, I feel the same way that it might not be the best to put it in a decision, but, but, you know. Okay. Yeah. Possibly with the trails committee, right? Do they do? Do they work on horse trails as well? No, that's just, I'm trying to get started. <laughs> You're trying to get started. Um, Another project. Yeah. So I, I feel reluctant to include it, but I feel reluctant to to drop it entirely too because that's a really nifty opportunity. So um, as we look across the table, if everybody is. Um, going to work as hard as they can to try and make something possible. Absolutely. That I, satisfies I, me. Just to back up, I, I, Jane and I met and, you know, I went over the, what we could do and, you know, she wasn't too crazy about it. Yeah. And, but, you know, now, now we're there. Plan B, so, plan B didn't work. Right. So we're, now we're back to plan A. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we're trying to make it so, better. So, okay. so like through the Legacy chair, Farms. are you willing to fund yeah. any portion of it? Oh, I'll fund the whole thing. Yeah. Do, do check. Do check. If I may yeah. propose a condition that yeah. I think might be better agreeable for everybody. Uh, so uh, basically change the existing condition to say the applicant sh uh, shall work with the town to evaluate a parking area for horse trailers within the open space area on the northeast corner of the property. And then take out the sentence, the area shall be shown on the definitive subdivision plan. If I may, through the chair. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't say within the open space area because this m might be on town land instead of in the open space of the okay. plan itself. So maybe say, uh, take out the within the open space area. So but just at, in, on the northeast corner? Around yeah, the northeast because corner. that leaves it fairly broad. In the vicinity of the northeast corner. Yeah. Sounds good. So the applicant shall work with the town to evaluate a parking area for horse trailers along the northeast corner. Evaluate and potentially install. Well, but are we, what are we requiring? Is it to be That's right. right. Yeah. I'd be okay with just removing it. So this is the. Because evaluation doesn't really. This is the property good. line in there. Yeah. I don't know that evaluating it helps us either, but. Yeah. Well, Jane and I will make it work. <laughs> So it's, it's, I think, evaluates pretty big. That's, it is. Yeah. I think we need to have it in, not for this case, but for future cases where we work with developers and say, well, they didn't have it in theirs, why should we have it in there? And it just, it's, it's nice to keep it in there, and I'm sure they'll, they'll do their best to work it out. Yeah, I think it speaks to the intent anyway, even if it doesn't have any standard. Of course, yeah. Whatever that's worth. 
How's everybody feeling? Dave, what are you thinking down there? I, I did have a few questions. Just, uh, yep, go ahead. So, we don't, we, did we say we don't have a maximum driveway length? We don't. We do not, right? Okay. And, the, and the length of the cul de sac was over 1,000 feet or roughly? 1,000. 1,000 exactly? Yes. Okay. yes. And do we have anything on the um, trails? Potential trail connection of trails that might be being, no, there are not. you know, cut off with existing trails. So they're included. Oh, they're included on the plan. They're, they're included, included on the plan. In the plan. Okay. So there's a condition through the chair. There's a mm -hmm. condition that says the project shall maintain existing walking trails where possible, as well as make a concerted effort to establish new publicly accessible trails within the on-site open space. And I just wanted to note as well from uh, what the fire chief was saying that I believe the three or four longest driveways are going to be the houses that are sprinkled. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Mayor? I have nothing else. Here. All right. Uh, so over under on the uh, forest trails out or in with the word design versus evaluate? Evaluate in. doesn't really mean anything. I the design. Evaluate. Design. <laughs> <laughs> Blue it with design, the way he, he rewrote it. Design. Design or evaluate horse, tra uh, horse parking, horse trailer parking. Evaluate. <laughs> oh, good. No, I'm not good. <laughs> Wait, that was three evaluators. <laughs> Let's <laughs> <laughs> just survey the horses. All right, so all those in favor of uh, asking the developer to do his best to design a uh, parking area on the northeast corner, show of hands. My, I'm not okay with design because it's not committed to doing this. The value, design. yeah. I, do you mind us putting it? We're just asking you to do your best to design it. Sure. We understand that, you know, you don't walk on water and it might not be possible. Okay. But evaluate doesn't really help us, I don't think. So. All right. Um, any other uh, special permit findings? Any other conditions to suggest? Just the ones that are in the draft decision. Yep. Yep. And then, did you include the ones that I sent? I did not. But which one? So there's two. No, actually, it's three. One is that the uh, infiltration basin, the evaluators prior to uh, the reviewed by a town official um, before it's home and seated. Evaluate the soils and... Evaluated and something by a town official? Evaluate the... Observe the soils to, to confirm that they are in alignment with the design assumptions for infiltration and grass. I have them in email, but I can't access my email. So I can't read them off to you, but if you want to include the conditions from beta. I sure do. Yeah, I sure do. And then there's, there's two uh, involving stormwater pollution prevention. One is to provide a copy, final signed copy yep. to the board. And the second is that the contractor shall provide uh, stormwater pollution prevention reports to the construction. I believe that should be That's in there already? Um, it should be. I'm not seeing it right now, but I will add it if it's not. Okay. Right. Through the chair, John is referring to SW1, 2, and 3 on the newest letter from today? Or yeah, I just gave him my copy. This is right. Which one? This oh, the newest source. letter from today. Oh. This is from Eversource. Thank goodness. Okay. Well, oh, that was the Eversource one. Phil sent me. Yeah. Ah. You sent me. This is uh, with those not conditions. this hearing. Yeah. 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 He sent an email separately with okay. the conditions. Okay. Um, and you have them. I have it. It's just okay. not at the moment. All right. 
Um, can I ask the board uh, your uh, feeling on combining the two decisions or separating them? I have a strong feeling I would like to keep them separate, but how does everybody else feel? I'm different. I would go with your your feelings. Oh. <laughs> kept them separate in the past. I keep it separate now. I agree, Gary. That's fine. Separate. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're gonna the decision is drafted all together, but we're gonna have two separate decisions. Okay. All righty. I lose track of the name. So for the open space special permit, um, John, we have your comments. So the development meets the purpose of an open space and landscape preservation development as described in 210-106, and we understand this to be true. Um, the development standards contained in 210-112A through 1 through 4 have been met. The common open space is designed in accordance with the standards as set forth in 210-113B. The common open space is designed in accordance with the standards set forth in 210-113C. The parcel could be developed as a conventional subdivision under existing local, state, and federal land use regulations. And the open space and landscape preservation development provides for efficient use and delivery of municipal and other services and infrastructure. Anybody have any comments or questions on that? Okay. So, um, help me out with the decision, John. How are we going to separate this out? Just vote. Just vote the. the so um, we can amend. So it can be done. I guess one of two ways we can put in the decision to replace the previous decision with this one, or we can write the decision that amends specific findings and conditions of the previous decision. I would recommend we go and just have a replace, because it's a completely different project than yes. was previously approved. I think that makes sense. Yes. But you have a combined decision, that's my question. I do, so it would just basically be, I would be splitting apart the findings into two different decisions, and then the conditions that apply to the subdivision into one decision, and the conditions that apply to the special permit in another decision. Okay, so I'm going to walk through the whole thing. Do you want to walk? I'm going to let you walk through the whole thing. Doris. So the findings, uh, section E. So I think um, A, B, C will all be written as uh, followed by the minutes and stuff like that. Um, that's the discussion, the special permit criteria, so, and that will be just trans, uh, written from what's in the actual regulations yeah. um, for each the special permit and the subdivision. The general findings of fact will apply likely for both because it's just the general project details. Okay. Um, and then the specific findings will be specific to what you just went through with the special permit. And then whatever one's applied to the subdivision will be applied to the subdivision decision. And then the decision and conditions uh, will also be listed. And that will, I think, in the... So there's, there's waivers that were requested that were both for the special permit and then also for the yeah. subdivision. So those will be broken apart. So the, the waivers for the subdivision will be included in that decision. Yep. The waivers for the special permit will be sectioned off of that decision. And yep. then the conditions that apply to whatever they apply to will be in their respective uh, decision. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor on this one after we vote it. I'm going to ask you to send it to me and one other person to review it before we sign it. Yep. Just because I just want two eyes on it to make Makes sure sense. after you do it. Um, okay. So I will entertain a motion on the um, open space special permit with the conditions as detailed in the draft decision, understanding that the conditions that apply to the special permit will be separated out for the special permit. I move that we pass that motion. Second. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions or concerns? Um, is there anybody who is particularly um, excited about being the second uh, 
second reader. I'd love to be. That's awesome. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so both Gary and I, that'd be great. All right, any questions, concerns? Um, all those in favor of um, the special permit? I'm sorry? Was that seconded? Yes. It was. Yeah. Thank you. Don't ask me who, but it was. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Um, and I will entertain a motion on the definitive subdivision plan to approve in the similar fashion. I motion that we approve the definitive subdivision plan as listed in the draft decision. In the draft decision. In the draft decision. Is there a second? Second. Any question? Did you I'm have just sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little touchy here. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And just to clarify, that necessarily means that all those waivers that we had approved previously are all included in the decisions. Okay. Oh, he tells that now. <laughs> What's that? He tells that now. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, yeah, did we just vote? I don't remember. We did. Yes. Okay. There, we voted, sorry. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really losing my mind. I was um, reading, sorry. I'll entertain a motion to John Hanson. close nope. the public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to admit, I didn't remember. Somebody had to remind me. So Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank Any so abstentions? Much. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you. That was a lot of information. Oof. All right, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> So number two, we are going to have uh, 9799 South Street, please. Okay. Through the chair. Yes. The 76 Main Street still needs to be voted. Oh, okay. And Maspadoc needs to be voted to continue. Yes. All right, we might as well do that in order. We don't have to take any action on that number four. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five of us. That's a quorum. Can I entertain a motion to... Um, yeah. To approve the approve the withdrawal or allow the withdrawal. Uh, yeah, allow the withdrawal. Allow the withdrawal of 76 Main without, Street. Without prejudice. Without, without prejudice. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Any comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And just note that Gary and Amy weren't here. Okay. Thank you. And we don't have and to take any action we, on four. We have to move to continue Maspinock. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, I will entertain a motion to continue Maspinock Woods to the meeting on October 7th. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to whistle a happy tune for just two minutes. <laughs> Just a reminder if anybody is here for um, the uh, Blueberry Lane Abbott Farm Abbott Realty Trust hearing that has been um, continued to October 28th. Um, get business done while you're out there. Sure, if it's relevant. Well, sure. Uh, I want to thank Chief Slayman for being such a great example, saving lives. Saving lives. And uh, inspiring people to uh, take classes to learn how to do that. Thank you. What? Can I mention, 
I noticed, oh, I looked at my phone when I left yes. the room, and that someone reported HCAM not being able to hear the sound. Um, that that someone reported trying to watch it at home, they couldn't hear. Or us? Anything. Anything. So but our sound isn't going out? Maybe uh, not live. Maybe, maybe not live. Maybe in the recording well. People at home. People, are are, people at home are reporting not being able to hear the sound. Can't hear the sound. Right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Seems to be even here fine. Mm -hmm. This caused a loop. All right. Yeah. Two people missing. I really miss the TV monitor. In we can try and reorganize, so maybe the board's over there and set that up. Yeah. It's, it was tough that. because we, did, we wanted to put you guys over there, yeah. but then you have this door right in front of you, and right. you wouldn't be able to see the monitor. And there's really, so it's either here or there. So we can try there next time. Yeah. If you want. I'm happy to try one more time, one more time, and then also see if we're able to solve the sound. If we're not able to solve the sound, then. We I, it will be taped anyway, right? Right. So um, eventually there will be sound. It's just frustrating. Okay. okay. Awesome. Um, so we are on to the public hearing for 9799 South Street. Thank you for your patience. Evening, Joe Magna, joined by Harold Ligian, owner, um, manager of South Street Properties. Uh, since we left you folks last, we have had a couple of very productive meetings with some of the other players uh, in this process. We met uh, in August with both Design Review and the Conservation Commission. Um, we discussed elements, uh, Andy Lover, architect, is joining us here this evening. We discussed elements with regard to um, the treatments, uh, the, um, the glass, um, the uh, screening of the lower levels, um, exhausted uh, quite a few of those topics. Um, we came out of there with a consensus that the designs were solid. Um, a couple of issues came up in a memo uh, regarding um, snow stakes and to protect the uh, traffic islands and the fact that uh, signage would have to be reviewed individually. Uh, okay. They couldn't give us a bike approval for that that night, so uh, we will be back to see them once the, the issues regarding signage is worked out. Um, we also met with conservation on the 20th and uh, went through the designs with that group. Um, as a result of that discussion, we made some changes to the site plans, which we forwarded to the board last week. Yeah. Um, they asked us to rework the limit of the wetlands resource areas along that northerly side and to include the existing detention basin uh, because of the establishment of the wetlands vegetation in there, chiefly cat and tails to make that a regulated resource area. So we've added that to the plans and the associated buffer zones. Um, they asked us to punch up the operation and maintenance for long-term inspection and maintenance activities. Uh, the folks at Southfield have been doing it informally since 2004, um, but we put together some protocols to formalize that whole process. Inspections of the closed drainage system, catch basins, manholes, detention basin, uh, the sweeping of the parking lots and driveways, um, put together some ideas about um, standard reports and timing of reporting. Uh, pull all that together at the, at the um, request of the commission and have uh, included it in the package sent off to this board. We also uh, add another sheet to the package. Um, like yourselves, conservation is concerned about impact site wide, but they also have a mandate to focus in on areas within the jurisdiction, how to keep from those wetlands resource areas. So we had a sheet 1.9 to spell out extra activities under their review. And uh, we received approval that night, and that information was forwarded to them last week. So we should get an order of condition sure. All right. In addition to that, um, we added some, it made it redundant, 
We added some information in regard to the lighting. It was in the original package. Uh, there was a question as to just what fixtures were going to be included, how folks could research those. So we sent along cut sheets, um, a poll detail for construction, and highlighted just what fixtures would be where the building mounted as opposed to the uh, light pole mounted. And all that stuff is again in that package, perhaps a couple of times, but it was all there. Okay, perfect. John? Uh, so the comments uh, that we received are basically from the Design Review Board. They mm -hmm. approved uh, to recommend approval by the Planning Board uh, unanimously. They had two comments, um, one that Joe mentioned about the signs, and the other one that uh, applicant confirmed snow stakes would be utilized in order to better preserve the health of the trees with regard to snow plowing. There was a concern that the plows would damage the trees, so snow stakes uh, were said to be, were going to be used, and they just wanted to confirm that fact. <coughs> um, DPW did not have any comments on that application, um, and I believe that was really it. Uh, any questions or concerns? Just as a reminder to everybody here and the public, um, this is a minor site change, site plan uh, change. Um, so we should still ask for public comment, right? Yeah. If there is any comment from the public, sure. Question: We are not doing trees grow for the record. Uh, solar panels, because we've been talking about solar energy. Is that in design? We, we are actively working on a plane. Um, I've uh, actually got schematics, and my goal is to, is to try to put solar on that roof. Um, we also have um, provisions um, for electric cars um, on the site. Uh, as we have a, we, we feel we have a demographic uh, that is going to be interested in um, pursuing that, that uh, purpose as well. And if I may follow up question, because uh, I was just looking that you're going to put internal office spaces, labs, and clean rooms, conference rooms. Um, have you, and I apologize, if I don't know the detail of this. Have you, um, is this, have you looked at and what is going to, what kind of businesses and things would be using the labs and the clean rooms, and has that been approved and addressed? Well, the entire facility is going to be used by like a Oh, so, right. Yes, yeah. yeah. this is just a single user. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve this the minor site plan changes. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Shape your time. Thank you. <laughs> I will entertain a motion to close that hearing. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? What would I do without my friends? I would never remember that. That's <laughs> um, okay. I am going to entertain uh, the public hearing for 223 Pond Street, the scenic road permit, uh, Christina Andre Navas. Hello. Uh, Dan McIntyre representing Christine and Andre. I have, I have a couple extra copies. Uh, thanks. I'm only get enough for everybody. Are these in the pocket? Should be. Yes. That's all good. Yeah. So, uh, Yes, please. Uh, Christine and Andre are in an enviable position after we placed their cesspool that served them admirably for 60 or 70 years with a new septic system. Uh, we were retained to design that new one. If, if you look at the plan, the, the leaching field itself is going to be constructed up behind the house in the field up there where, where the bulk of the construction is going to happen. And that's going to be accessed through an existing driveway and stonewall opening further down Pond Street. But the septic tanks themselves have to be up closer to the house where the plumbing comes out of the foundation. And there's no way to access that area from the rear because of some existing stone walls and the steepness of the slope. 
So we're asking uh, permission to remove a portion of that stone wall so the septic contractor can access right up upon street to, ex to excavate for those tanks and for the tank truck to actually deliver those tanks. Clarification, you temporarily remove Temporarily, exactly. Okay, and then replace. And then replace. In the style of the existing wall. As best it can be, yes. As best as possible. All right, I'll start. I'm going to start to my left. Dave, do you mind? I'm also. Mayor, let's just take lots of pictures and don't try to make it prettier than it was. <laughs> just make right. it. That's it. I, I'm all for it. I just want to clarify there are trees in the photograph, but I assume they're not in the right of way. Right. They're, they're on the private property. They're on the private property. Yeah, okay. And, uh, Andre has a stockpile of trees up the back. He's probably going to place them. Question too. Okay, John. No comments. DBW reviewed it. They had no comments. Righty. I have to get to my appropriate number here. Which number is it? If I may, is there any public comment? Right. Thank you. Thank you. It took me a minute. I was I I, I did it to myself going out of order. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So the decision criteria: the degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based. Um, so that's why we encourage you to take pictures and encourage you to um, bring those rocks back in as natural a state as possible to match the um, existing law. The necessity of the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, or convenience, I think we have satisfied that it's necessary. Um, there is no compensatory action such as replacement of trees except for you're going to put the wall of the stones back. Yes. Um, the availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work which could reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls, um, I think that that's the only way it can be done. Um, whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historic values, I think we're satisfied that that won't happen. And the consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies. And I see no conflict. Any issues at all? I will entertain a motion to approve the um, scenic road permit uh, for 223 Pond Street. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? You're all set. Thank you Thanks so very much. much. Thank you. Is, it, is there any waiting period or how does it actually work? Uh, so I will draft the decision and file it, and there is an appeal period. Don't we have no, no yeah. appeal period. Okay. So. We have a couple of weeks to do it. It probably won't take that long. Yeah, I should be able to get it to you soon. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Thank you. Those in favor, you got it. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I think that's the first one I have remembered <laughs> on my own. Thank you. Thank All right, you. you're welcome. I'm going to take care. All right, number three, number four. All right, number four, the new public hearing for 57 Hayden Row, major site plan review, um, Keith Chesmore, Chesmore Funeral Home and Cremation Services. Joyce Hastings, I'm from GLM Engineering, and I'm here this evening with uh, the owner, Keith Chesmore, and the builder, Mark Delicker. And we're here for Thank you. 
area, first floor area, of greater than uh, 5,000 square feet. So if you look on the plan, you can see that right now we have the brown areas in this building, as well as the barn and garage area over to the side. Um, so this area here will be demolished, and this orange area here is the addition that will be constructed. The purpose of the addition is to create a, a chapel area that's not cut up into multiple little rooms, one large area um, that will be safe and have a good uh, layout within it. The lower area will contain uh, a funeral service area and then also a six car area. It will also allow uh, trucks to, or trucks, to be able to come in and be unloaded within the building. Um, and then there will be, as there is now, an apartment on the upper uh, level of this. So the area, again, this is the area of the addition. Um, there's a deck, two decks on the back of it. The existing parking layer is what you see now, the, dark, the darker gray area. The only pavement that we're adding to this, the only thing we're changing is a drive that allows us to get to the garage doors at the back of the building. That would be the main access into the lower area. There's also a second garage door here, but that's just for equipment um, uh, that will be used either for maintenance of the, of the property or uh, just used occasionally. We have um, taken and for stormwater, we've got increased impervious surface uh, of the building here. Pervious surface area by 5,555 square feet. So we have taken this addition, the building addition, and the, that's the, the building addition and this extra pavement. So we've taken this uh, portion of the building and infiltrated it into a series of Caltech chambers and calculated it through the 100 year storm so that we are not increasing the rate or the volume of runoff that go off the site. This area that we see in the light green is the existing lawn. There's a tree line to, to the side on the east side of the property. Uh, there is a fence along this side of the property on the southerly side. There is a, a fence along this side. Uh, one of the things that we are proposing is to plant six additional trees on this side of the property. Uh, as far as the lighting goes, there are some additional existing lighting within the parking and on the building. In the design, building design review, uh, they asked that perhaps additional light be provided in the parking lot. We're going to have four uh, light, lights in the parking lot here. There'll be there's a light already in the pole here. We're going to put one of the entrance is up on dark sky and facing away from the people, both pointed down so that it's not shining in anybody's uh, in windows or yards. Uh, there will be additional lighting in the building in seven locations on the, above the garage doors, again, shining down so that uh, they can provide access. Uh, as far as parking goes, the parking, we're not changing the parking. The goal of this isn't to increase occupancy, it's to increase flow and functionality of the building. Um, so the, book, the parking area right now is spread for uh, 20 parking spaces. Uh, there's handicapped access in the front. There's two cases that will be, are not at this moment, but are acting as handicapped spaces over here. Those will be uh, striped and marked. Um, during, during a funeral service or a chapel service for the building, the parking configuration is, is different. It's staged um, on site so that there are parking in the parking spaces or the parking in the uh, basically in a configuration that stacks everything so that it can be at appropriate time. Um, so we have, basically the parking is stacked within the parking lot itself. The same in the back, uh, uh, the employees of the funeral taking back the cars in this area here so that we have a runway in here, there's an exit, there's a uh, <coughs> service that the cars come in this way and they get stacked so that they're coming back out. They also, if it's necessary, expand onto the lawn as they have it because it's uh, uh, compacted enough so that parking here 
individuals doing it throughout the year is not an issue. Uh, and we've also said just for employees, uh, that we can have six cars in the basement and we put uh, three in the, in the <coughs> spread that goes down to the garage door. Uh, erosion control, right now, uh, we're proposing erosion control around the stockpile. The flow of the, flow of the site is <coughs> in this direction. So if any stockpiles will have erosion control ring around them. And uh, I think that's basically the, the outline of, of what we wanted to show as far as the proposed addition goes. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. Sure. Yeah. Just one unrelated announcement. The library is closing, so if anyone goes out that door, you can use the restrooms, but please do not open those doors. You will set the alarm off and we'll have a visit from the cops. So please just come out to this door and you can just exit through the glass doors. Okay. I also Question. just wanted to add a note that there's no dumpster on site. There's no dumpster at all on the outside. We're going to get to questions. Okay. I'm going to ask Phil for his comments next. So, uh, my name is Phil Paradis with Beta Group. We've been asked to peer review this project. Uh, it sounds like there's been some uh, updates to the plan relative to our comments. Um, so, um, so we, we wanted to, we, we visited the site and we know there's a retaining wall on the yeah, south side. Was it? Yeah. So, so it, it, just to let the, the planning board know, if they don't already, this is already under construction. And uh, so, they, so they've already demolished the building and they're in the process of laying the foundation, I think, for the rest of the yeah. So there's a retaining wall on that south side. We just want someone to look at it, make sure it's, it's, it's still safe. And yeah, it's a retaining wall that's between um one to two and a half feet high. It's a. Uh, it's. It doesn't appear to be going to cut it at this end here, where it extends into the building, and it will be uh, poured into the existing. I mean, the proposed foundation. And it does look like you've added the uh, structures that were within a hundred feet of the. I did add the structures. The the, so uh, one of the questions was, could I add the uh, buildings that were within? Um, some other just to do, I'm assuming you do. One of the comments too was there was a shed, our existing shed looked to be closer and is closer than the required zone setback. That shed is not on a foundation and can be moved to meet the appropriate requirements for setback setback. It's off my foot. There you go. Um, and then, um, so, so I, I, I think uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around the, the, the parking issue because you're increasing, a, significantly increasing the, the overall size of your building. I still expect relatively the same amount of people. We just haven't crammed in at this point. Um, I have another funeral home in Holliston. A lot of our bigger services are about 150 people, which we can accommodate over there at about 60 parking spaces. Um, and then we have on-street parking to, to go both locations. And this is just to, really for down the road when it, it does get bigger, is when we started uh, back in 76, and the population was about 6,000 people, and now it's tripled just about. And I would say things are getting changing as people don't have religions, but it's easier to build now, and so to have not again. They're just arming that part okay. of the library. Instead <laughs> <laughs> um, of trying to add on again and again, just it's almost the exact same as this library. You know, back when this was started, same population. Now they've added on a large number of uh, square footage, and I think their capacity is almost the same as what this capacity is. And we have more parking than here is. <clears throat> and we have uh, an agreement if we need to, if the on street parking wasn't working. I have an agreement with the church too, where people could either walk from the church or we could shuttle them back and forth, the same as the line right here. So I think that there is a, a standard for the parking that we have to adhere to? So, so. there's no particular, uh, it, this doesn't fall into a uh, written uh, requirement. Okay. 
in, in your bylaw, uh, but it, it does say that you, 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 rip, you, you find the closest one okay. and you try to match it. So, so um, the one that's closest is, is assembly, place, places of assembly, which require one space for, for every two seats. Uh, the applicant has uh, provided uh, enough parking for one for every three seats. Um, and I was able to find uh, Massachusetts doesn't have any requirements, but I found another state, another town, with a bylaw s specific to funeral homes. And we figure three people per car. By the time you figure limousines, most people who come to a service are usually families of three or four. There's very few that come as single people. So just out of historic use, it's, we figured almost three people per car. So I was saying we don't quite fall into any of them. And even at times when we have big, big services, um, like seniors, the senior bus shows up with a dozen people. So like it, are, it's tough to pigeonhole us into any particular category. But at least two, three people is what we figure. So um, I think I think that needs to be decided. maybe thought about some more. I mean, they do have plenty of area if, if they are going to park on the grass. We have plenty more. I could add another 20, 30 cars just parking, just staging the parking lot. This is not. The Actually, Madam Chair, I do have a point of clarification. Is the, are the parking estimates based on the actual parking spots or based on the stage based number on the of parking? Based so on the stage. So it's the staging where we're going to need it because everybody comes at once for the service at once. Understood. So so you have 28 so, full-time uh, designated parking space. Right. And those would not, this is not, uh, then the layout that we would do for the staging for a service doesn't, Follow those lines Understood. Out. So, how many cars can you accommodate in your parking uh, area, not including the grass? 80, 80, not including the grass? Not including the grass. Including the garage or not including the garage? Uh, including the garage. Including the garage. So, I have 83 spaces. Yeah, but it's. Uh, I have 83 spaces that includes the grass. Um, cool. And I would have to take a. Uh, 16 and 8. Uh, 24 out of that. Is on the original the original submission didn't have any on the grass. And you had it, it always it's always shown on the grass. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So fifty nine spaces on the pavement. Staged. You staged. Uh, staged. Yep. staged. Understood. Yep. And then what's your occupancy? Um we're gonna be here for like 250, 248 or something like that. We're gonna have five uh, bathrooms. There's one for every 50, so. One for I mean, I could always cut the oxygen to 150, but we're gonna we'll say the room will be there for 250, and we need to expand later or park and we can pay us that when we come to it. Is there a way we could just um, require seeing having a copy of the shared parking agreement with the church? Uh, they don't write one, even the library doesn't have a written agreement with the church. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I checked. Because I, I don't want to pay more for the service than is needed. And yeah, exactly. shared, shared parking is ideal. Yeah. But I say most of the, I've never, never really had any people who need to get them on the property or on the road. And my issue is like, well, once we get this on, the line of the people is into the building, the, um, the parking lot is open. And if anyone's gone to a busy service at the place, when the line gets up the door, people will go right by the entrance because they don't want to pull in the parking lot with the people there. But the parking lot's practically empty. So they all park on the street or around the corner or what have you. So getting the line into the building frees up the parking. We have big services. I usually have extra people to help guide the cars in the parking lots and what have you. Mm -hmm. Matt? Yes. Um, questions. Um, are you expanding the number of uh, is it called chapels or rooms or? No, just the room rooms? I have now, I can only fit about 50 people in. And then we have to start having people in the other rooms surrounding, the, which they can't really see too well. I mean, they can usually broadcast it through the speakers, but. It kind of circulate through. It, it, it doesn't function well. I mean, it's okay. But it sounds like a little improvement. Okay. Yeah, it's like Holliston, I put an addition on, uh, my father and I put an addition on 20 some odd years ago. We went from the same thing. We went from a capacity in a room of about 50 to 
we can put 150 in one room and put uh, 75 in another. Uh, uh, I, I have a statement through the chair and then a question. Uh, statement is that in the busiest of uh, times people have parked in the grass has um, been very respectful and peaceful. Not you know, it's not like a restaurant or something. It's serious. Yeah, no, no donuts. <laughs> And uh, my, my question is, uh, the setback on the south side, is that, is 50.9? It's a 10 mm -hmm. It's a 10 foot required setback. So, so it's more space than what is required? Yes. Thank you. And Phil, were you, were you done? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, so the uh, existing parking lot really doesn't conform to your current standards? Mm -hmm. relative to uh, landscaping um, and buffer zones and lighting. Um, so, and it sounds like there's been some work on relative to that um, with some lands added landscaping. We added so some trees to buffer the northerly neighbor. Um, I mean, the, so they are going to be seeing a fairly sizable addition. Well, there's a fence here. And there's a fence here. We're just adding some trees there just for softening and to uh, at some point add them. Yeah, yes. Uh, they are going to see a bigger building. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, so so I think uh, just just making sure it meets the the standard relative to the number of trees um, and uh, I don't know if this you have interior parking space. Um, you know, requesting a waiver for those things. Yes. The, also, one of the major things is your driveway widths don't meet the current standards either. Uh, they, they look to vary from, I don't know, 12 ish to 16. Um, so that, that would be more of a, an issue for uh, our friend back here. Um, <laughs> but. The, the standard is 24 feet, um, and so I, none, none of the drivers are, are 24 feet. No, so. we, were, we, were, we weren't proposing to change what's existing. Okay, well I think that would be something that we want to make sure that you're, if there's any improvement we can make relative to public safety, that would be the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to, of course, the waiver for the, for the size of the, your, your driveways. Um, so you also uh, I'd like to see the utilities. So the AC units I show they're under there's up to between two and three AC units that are going to be under the the deck over here, the second story deck that can be screened. Um, there and if you're all of the utilities are interior to the building. Okay. But you've got water and sewer, and some services. There's an existing water and gas that comes into this location here, and there's an existing sewer line that comes to the back here. Okay. That line will be uh, obviously be connected to the building. We just want to show the site distance measurements. I don't think you got an issue there, but just provide those on the plan. Um, sidewalk, you know, requirement for, to have a sidewalk along the frontage of your project. Um, I know there's a sidewalk on the opposite side of Hayden Road, but not on this side. So I think, think again, you have to ask for a waiver from that. Um, lighting plan, I think you got to provide the details and, and photometrics for whatever you're proposing relative to lighting. And then we want to make sure that the chief is satisfied relative to access and, and or hydrants. Um, <clears throat> mechanical equipment, you just asked solid waste, you've just answered already. Um, we just, uh, relative to storm water, uh, you're providing uh, infiltration for the roof. I think there may be opportunity to provide Low impact development practices relative to the parking lot itself to um, increase the water quality as, as well as infiltration. You're talking about things like grass whales and such? 
Say that again? Are you talking about things like grass swales? Or yeah, yeah. So we're trying not to do any swales adjacent to the parking lot because that's where they park um, cars. So it would be, we're trying not to change the grade and direct water to it. Um, right now it goes off into the grass and it has not been an issue. Um, so we, to put grass swale there, we talked about it, the problem is it would, it might stop parking at certain times of the season. Okay. There may be an opportunity to put it on that on that uh, north side with your, your your pavement sheets off. Put it uphill. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, because it's all it's going no. it's going this way. Yeah, it's uphill. It, it's uh, it sheet flows off into this into this area. Axle so. lower and put the swing on. Um, it's already lower. Uh, You're already lower. So what we would do okay. is we would we will we'll look at that. Okay. I mean, so those are the things that we. Is there an opportunity on, on the south side? Lower. South side as well. <coughs> You're going to repave the parking lot? Uh, not at this time. We'll see yeah. down the road. But I, yeah, so when I looked at picture, the pictures, it looks like it slopes a little over there. Um, yeah, relative to and then erosion controls, we'd like to see it around the perimeter of your uh, work area, not just the uh, stockpile and provide a, an operation and maintenance plan for your, your site. Close my comments. Thank you, John. <clears throat> so we received comments from several other town organizations. Um, would you like me to read those out loud? Uh, sh sure, they're brief, right? Um, I will read, yes, I will read. Really, Board of Health, because if the Chief would like to, I yeah. can read yours, or you can speak, bring up your comments as well. Or I can do it if you don't want to. Oh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so from the Board of Health, uh, there were four comments, and it's the funeral home and how building a service with municipal water and sewer service. As such, well or septic installation is not a concern. The construction and demolition work must be completed in accordance with all applicable rules and regulations as promulgated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts asbestos, lead, dust, and pest controls. Efforts should be taken to minimize nuisance conditions during the development process, and as stated in the stormwater report, any illicit discharges identified will be terminated, and the proposed site uses will not generate, store, or discharge any pollutants to the <coughs> groundwater and or wetland resource areas. And the fire chief uh, said, the observations that stand out are the front access, the reference to stack parking, and our ability to travel through to Holt Street. The engineer has commented that all access requirements are met. Below are code, code references and comments uh, per 527 CMR1, chapter 182321. Uh, fire department access road shall extend to within 50 feet of at least one exterior door that can be opened from the outside and that provides access to the interior of the building. The comment is fire department access roads are defined as having an unobstructed width of not less than 20 feet, unobstructed vertical clearance of not less than 13 feet 6 inches, and services designed and maintained to support the imposed loads of fire apparatus on an all-weather driving surface. Uh, currently, Hayden Row Street meets the qualifications of a fire department access road per 527 CMR1, but the distance to the closest exterior door of 57 Hayden Row Street exceeds 50 feet. Uh, additional comments are a swept path analysis of the existing U-shaped driveway will assist us in assessing if our vehicles will be able to exit Hayden Row Street during an emergency for the safety of our responders as well as passing traffic. Also, the proposed stacked parking solution would not allow emergency apparatus access to either side or rear of the structure. It would also eliminate our secondary means of access from Holt Street. These factors will increase risk for all involved parties during an emergency event. And no other comments from DPW. Okay. Comments from you? Uh, nothing that doesn't echo what uh, these comments have already been said. Is the stacked parking new? No, we usually, we've do, been doing it for a long time. We don't usually fill it up like we did. We just wanted to show we would be able to fit all cars on the property. But we usually have a couple of rows with the center aisle going down. Kind of a standard in the, the business for what most of us do. We just have to make sure we have emergency access. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. We just wanted to show we could fit that many cars on the property. Um, so, uh, 
the two, com the two comments together. The access, it, this is hold up here, right? Yes. Right. That, that driveway that you didn't want to touch, you yeah. might have to look at um, for, for, to meet the bylaws and also for safety access. We will take a, we will take a look at that. Um, Chief, what, what is the what is the typical approach to um, a stack parking arrangement like this? Um, I haven't dealt with a stack parking arrangement before, so yeah. I typically have a, a design that shows what the access is, and uh, I think the only I, I, I spoke with uh, Keith today. Um, we got to get together with my fire engineer and the building inspector. We're scheduled for next Monday. Oh, good. And we're evaluating uh, the uniquenesses. It's a partially sprinkler building, so I kind of look through 5.7 and try to determine length of access as they're trying to work you through closed line stretches and things like that. And then get close enough. And there's a few pieces of this stuff. I have basically four, and I have to have our fire engineer, third party reviewer, kind of walk me through that part of it. So I just, I'm not quite ready to explain the whole access answer right now. Right. So is there any plans to make it more completely sprinkled? Um, the whole new addition is going to be sprinkled. The where it butts all the new addition will have a curtain on the inside of the old. But trying to pull all the trim down and go through the whole building will probably be a few hundred thousand dollars to, to do the old building. So I presume it's also it's it's not it's also access if you know somebody at a service is in trouble. It's not just a fire yeah. event, right? So what do, what do you do in that case? Um, we pretty much always maintain access for anything to get in or out because we have a lot of times well, we we've had ambulances show up sure. before. We've had you know, police for escorts and stuff. So most of the cars we have keys in if we had to move something really quick and. So we're, we're prepared for most of that. Do you do they leave keys in the car? Oh, uh, when well, we take them, they do. Maybe that 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 could be a piece of the answer is to make sure that they just stay in the cars because you have people outside. As long as they don't have a little fob in their pocket when they walk away, but now, most of the time we, we get them. And that way, trying to back them in and put them where we want is easier for us to just do it than trying to tell people how to do it. So we, we basically valet. Most of the cars. Okay. All right. So at this point, we usually go around um, to the planning board members and the public, asking for um, comments or if there are additions to the the um, detailed outline that people would like to make. So I'll start with you, Deb. Um, I'm a little concerned about the AC units being. Uh, creating noise for the neighbor. That's, under the so Deb, that is on, we can, we'll get to it, that is on the, the, the outline. Oh, yep, no, 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 we're just adding items. Oh, if, adding. Yep, yeah. if, they're, if they're not yeah. here. And then we'll walk through them all. Okay. No, which, that's okay. Which page is the, uh, 33? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the line is on there, so. Okay, I think I'm good. Okay. Amy? I don't have anything to add. Yeah, Frank? Uh, if we do not have solar, I would like to discuss that. It's on there. Okay. Thank you. Here. No additions. Okay. We're good. Anybody from the public here to speak on this? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have some questions, but nothing to add. Nothing to add. So what we're doing is adding to the outline right now, but we welcome your questions at the time. No questions. Okay. So we are just is sidewalks on there? I would think, right? Sidewalks are here. <laughs> I can't find the list. So I, yeah. 5.1.8. Oh, was that? 35 of the packet. Okay, thanks. 33 of the Yes, memo, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm working with a paper copy. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Um, okay. So, uh, do you have a specific question or comment on the project in general from the public? Mary? You had said. <laughs> yeah, no, quite well. Um, Mary, I'm not 51 Trees Road. Uh, some quick things. I wondered about significant snowstorms and where is the snow piled uh, when they plow because that might impact the parking area, and I don't know if that is a concern. I've always pushed it 
probably 75 feet off of the, the parking lot. Snow is snow removal is on here yeah. on the okay. outline. Wood. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then it's a two story building. Uh, basement and main floor. Okay, so there's not. Um, there's not a second story. For offices or no. anything like that. Okay. Uh, the roof is going to be in the same style as what's on the building now. That. Gabriel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then it was. Just, I think you addressed it. It's in there about um, main screening for the neighbors and stuff. Okay. Let me just make sure that that's there. Although I don't. Are, are there any neighbors here? Yes. Okay. Did you have any uh, general comments at first? Uh, no, well, yes, just one that Bruce Creswell's Junior at 6 Holt Street. I'm the abutter on the east side. Um, and I just want to state that I support the project. And uh, we, uh, all the time that the Chairs Mills have been there, almost 40 years, we've never had a problem with any of the services that have taken place there. Okay. Is there still more room? No. So, quick question. To the chair? Yes. So that shed is on both of your properties or that no, the, the, the property green, line is the daughter the line? The property line is in here. And the green is the tree cover? The green is just my color line. It's, it's uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To the chair, I just have a quick yeah. process question. Are the, the notices that go out to the butters, are those addressed to the address or to the person? They go to the legal. And, and the only reason I ask is that what the I know the what the the owners that are listed on the drawing at fifty nine Hayden Road they haven't owned that property I think in seven years so I just wanted to make sure that the right abutters are yeah, notified. So the abutters list is taken from the assessor's records, which should be more current. This I don't know where they get this information, but the uh, NF is now our formally. Okay. So. It's, it's probably going to be off the uh, town website, so some are uh, covered. So. Just to put the properties on here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, one other quick comment on that? Sure. Um, I know we'll get the sidewalks on the list, but I know for some time Holt Street has residents have been asking for sidewalks there. I'm just wondering. If you guys would be willing to think about putting a sidewalk along that area of your property on the street, we can consider it. Yeah, there. there's a fire hydrant um, along that side, which I mean, could be could be done. Yeah. May I come to that? I believe the sidewalk is on the opposite side of the street. It's proposed when it was up. up oh, when it was proposed. Yeah. I mean, at this point, where it's. Just to have a little stretch right in front of our property where it doesn't connect to anything, we just weren't certain that it would be practical. So usually, if it's a real big service, the cars drive up on the curb on that side, and you know, so you park along the road there. I feel like everyone else has done that. that one. Uh, there's a few neighbors who throw some really good parties down there and do the same thing. <laughs> uh, he, he does. <laughs> um, yeah, we will definitely talk about sidewalks. Um, okay, so in uh, just the interest of time, um, we can, um, so, uh, to be honest, the, I think that there are a lot of issues to deal with with the parking lot, yep. with uh, the comments from Beta and the concerns that the fire chief had. And the very first, um, the very first why Notice to, to, to the agenda item is vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow and truck traffic flow. So I think that it makes sense to um, continue this public hearing and give you a chance to more fully speak to Beta's concerns, which will be our concerns, and the fire chief's concerns, which will be our concerns. Yep. Um, and uh, when, when would be the next time for them to come back? So... Um Starting at 7.30 on the 23rd, it looks like we have something scheduled for every half hour increment. So that seems, well, I take that back. Whisper Waves decided, so we actually have an opening for Whisper Way. If we want to continue it to the 23rd. So September 23rd or October 7th, which makes better sense. I'd love to do the 23rd only because we're just trying to. Uh, Things. We would they'd like to keep going with the, the project if it's possible. Okay. 
So I will entertain a motion um, to um, continue this public <coughs> hearing to September 23rd. It's going to be starting at 7.30. Who will be starting to go through everybody to try and get everything resolved before that meeting? Yes, so you're going to have to really uh, work the issues um, and get it resolved by the Tuesday before the 23rd. Those are the deadlines for submittal for new plans. Does that still sound like an achievable? So if we can't, then we will request a continuance okay. that same day, that Tuesday. Okay. Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Yeah. Discussion? No, it hasn't been moved in seconds. Has it been moved? <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, <laughs> no he just threw the It's so okay. moved. Second. Okay, now it's been no, moved in seconds. Discussion? Discussion, please. Um, I'm kind of okay with what we've seen. Um, I think emergency access with the road, the driveway, it's not a road, it's a driveway. Uh, it's pre existing. Uh, if there is an emergency, it, people could easily drive on the lawn uh, to bring the big trucks in. Uh, I know the big trucks have been in the circle in front. Uh, okay, they fit okay there. Um, I, I don't see I don't see an urgent need to update the parking lot uh, based on the expansion of the building. It's it's not. Um, it is a big expansion space-wise, but it's not overwhelmingly... And it's not used yeah. every single day. It's yeah. very seldom. So I, I'd be kind of okay with approving what we have, unless the chief specifically disagrees. Uh, uh, how, about you, how about you look to your, your planning board members and see if anybody sure. is following along? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I disagree, because I think there's still some outstanding issues from the fire chief and anybody that need to be addressed and just to be consistent with our process to ignore those and move forward with some kind of approval doesn't wouldn't make sense to me um on the same page no i agree i agree um just we need to go through our agenda at least and have these yeah. discussions sure 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 so, yeah um sorry one more point of discussion um, yes if through the chair it would be great to see some elevations for this too uh, um, oh um, you mean to see what the building looks like yes 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 you could include that for next time. The architectural plan was architectural. Uh, was included. Yeah, so it was, was the link, but it was um, it was something that you had to download oh, separately. Right. It wasn't uh, included in our uh, plan. Uh, okay. It's like the six hundred and eleven pages wasn't plus the plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> and the other plans. The um, <laughs> right. was, I just I can't remember was that approved by the design review board or? Yes, we saw okay. it to have review. Yeah. Were there sections, site plan sections as well? Did I miss those? There um, were. And did you require them for. Because what I'm trying to figure out is that flow, and um, it'd be nice to see how the lot. Is. So there are, there are elevations, there are contour lines on the plan to show okay. uh, how the parking lot. So it's, the it's, as, it's, yeah, it's as gradual as. Yep, see, yeah, those, those are the contour lines are in each. And so they haven't changed at all. Yeah, so that's the existing idea. And then the next one would be the first The elevations are really nice if anyone has a chance to open them. They're, um, it's very yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just continuing. Uh, we're just voting on continuing right now. We are. I'm just making sure that she's not going to have something else to ask them for. No. You good? I'm okay. Good, yeah. All right. So um, all those in favor of continuing to September 23rd? So, okay. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. No. Any abstentions? Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we are now to the continued public hearing. Oh, remember to go out this way. <laughs> um, continued public hearing for the uh, LNG line replacement and the new public hearing for Cross Street Scenic Road. Both are ever source.
do you, would, through the chair, would you like to build a state forever source? Uh, if you don't need to, you don't need to. It's a bit, I mean, are you? Uh, okay. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, um, Phil. So, we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> um, do we have an outline? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep, seven. LNG is page 15 of the uh, memo. Sorry. Yep. Oh, six, it's seven, nine, oh, wait. Seven, 17 of the PDF. You good. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. All right. All right. Here we go. And this. Does the applicant have a preference on which one we start with? No. All right. Does the board care? Do you want to get the scenic road done first? It seems like lower hanging fruit. I'm okay with that. Um, so, the scenic road, I'm busy. Yeah. yeah, but then you have to find a different place in your mouth. <laughs> right, okay. my paper, paper page 25. Okay, paper page 25. That's, That's 27, 27 on the PDF, okay. Okay, go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves and the um, scenic road application. My name is Richard Paquette. I'm with uh, SWCA Environmental Consultants. I'm here tonight on behalf of Eversource Energy. John Berthy, Brian Candy here with Eversource Energy. Um, we can give a quick update on uh, why so Eversource has an existing pipeline easement. Mm -hmm. that as you may be aware, that uh, crosses Cross Street in Huntington, uh, which is a scenic road. Um, so we have the project before you is we're working on the replacement of the existing steel pipe that is within that line. Um, so that's why the scenic road uh, permit is before you tonight. Is that the only scenic road that the pipeline crosses? In Hockington. In Hockington. Doesn't go across Wilson? It does not. Okay. Right. So tell us what you need. Um, so there is a, an existing stone wall that I believe um, on the west of the portion? Yes. The, so the... And I can jump in two shots. So, so right now, Eversource has a 20-foot, the, the easement width transitions from a 30-foot wide easement to a 20-foot wide easement as it crosses uh, Cross Street, the scenic designated mm -hmm. scenic road. Um, within the road, right away, it's, it's a, it's a um, uh, perpendicular crossing, obviously, with, where the existing lines uh, goes across to right now. Um, the proposal would be to um, retire the six-inch line in place and install uh, the new replacement line within the same easement across Cross Street. Um, with regards to the uh, scenic road um, criteria, um, really we're talking about uh, an existing easement that is re relatively unvegetated across the road. Um, the, on the west side, there are you can, it's a pretty open corridor right on the east side. There's more shrub and herbaceous uh, vegetation with trees along the edge. But we did do a tree survey along the whole route um, and nothing came up over three inch diameter breast height within the actual easement width um, within the road corridor or road right of way. There is a, um, a, a portion of a stone wall that extends in to the easement by about say about five feet or so. Um, with the construction of the project, the, um, the plan is to use the entire easement width to construct the replacement pipeline. Um, so that wall will be temporarily moved, the, the, the stones will be moved, and then we have photo documentation of the way it looks and then return that to a pre-construction condition back in the same location when the construction is complete. Um, the easement itself, um, it's a pipeline easement. They are traditionally for maintenance. It's kept in a non-forested condition. Um, so at the uh, completion of construction, the, uh, the, the ground surface would be uh, returned to uh, pre-construction grade. There would be seed and mulch put down to restore and vegetation. Non-forested vegetation would be allowed to 
grow back within the easement, basically to the condition that it is now. John. So we had some comments. So first off, no comments from DPW. We did have some comments from town council. Um, four comments specifically. The applicant addressed these in a letter that I sent over today. We received it Friday afternoon. Um, and that, uh, I think we have the cover letter. Did we print out the cover letter for you guys as well? Yep. So that's so. the cover letter. They also include an archaeological survey, but it was confidential, so I was wary of sending it out uh, to the board. But I can send it out later. I just didn't know how you guys wanted us to handle that. Um, uh, typically, it's, it's, it's fine, I think, for the board, but yep. we just didn't put it you know, posted on the yep. internet. Um, so I can send that out to the board if you'd like to look. But the conclusion was that no archaeological or historic resources were really found in the area. Okay. I'm not sure we can we can split that hair. It either comes to us or it doesn't, right? Yeah, it's it's. I, I would have to talk to the town council. Yeah, I, I don't I'm, know I'm not sure that we, I, I'm not sure that there's a mechanism for doing that within open meeting law for us to see something and not not let the public see it. Um, I mean it's. sensitive sites in the general area that are discussed in the report. Yeah, we've, we've heard this before. They don't really want people tromping out there um, on sensitive sites just for curiosity factors. So we've, we've actually heard that before, and there's some mechanism for a review of the plan, and I don't remember how we did it. I've never, I've never dealt with it. We'll have, to, we'll have to figure that out. But it's not something we can send out to us um, as a board and not then make it public. I, I, what I can say is that the, so the way it, um, the archaeological um, survey and the program is done is um, archaeologists, archaeologists review the whole line, they identify based on certain, certain conditions, um, areas that they would consider more sensitive, that would, you know, um, and then they went to uh, Mass Historical Commission um, as well as tribal consultations. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, through the Army Corps process, which is the Section 106 of the Natural Historic uh, Preservation Act, um, the, uh, there was a, a request to do a um, detailed phase, they call it a Phase 1B survey, which is actually shovel testing in these uh, sensitive areas. So that's what was done. The actual cross location is not in a, in, a, in a sensitive area that was identified, so I can tell you that um, right, right off the bat. Through the chair? Yes. Um, was the survey done for the entire uh, easement within Hopkinton? Yeah, they, they, they do a walkthrough of the entire project mm, okay. area, and then they exclude a bunch of areas that just are not considered, you know, uh, viable as having potentially uh, some potential sensitivity for archaeological or historical resources. They do a first cut, and then what, what they were left over with was looked at with this phase one B survey. And um, were were there any sites within the easement in Hopkinton um, identified? You know where the construction will be done. Were there any sites not necessarily related to the scenic road one? <laughs> yeah, I believe the, I don't have the exact location in my head, but they, I, did, I believe they did look at an area to the west of um, it on the, of the Liberty Mutual property mm -hmm. um, to the west of that large wetland complex west of Cross Street in okay. that area. So there may there may be a, a site within the easement that we'll need to address um, in the other in the other decisions. Not well, I can't say that they, they, they looked at the area. They so looked nothing, at it. Oh, know, and they didn't find came anything. Came up as far oh, okay. as any. They didn't find any. Um, okay, I understand. Artifacts or anything that would we, you know make them think that this is no, stone formation or something like that. Okay. Study. And okay. the, the mentioned those results were shared with Mass Historical Society as well as the local tribes and um, Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. Yeah, we're just waiting for them to respond back. When was it? When was that shared? It's been about a month and a half, maybe two. We usually get it back in thirty days, but we haven't received a response back from from MHC uh, on that. And I will say that um, we had um, during our. our um, 
we had consultations with the Mass Historical Commission early on in the project. We, we filed a project notification form, and through the NEPA process, they came back and um, basically said they had no issues with the easement because we were working within an existing, previously disturbed construction easement. The, the, the need or the request for this additional survey work, which the report I provided to you, came through our consultation with the, the uh, Native American tribes that uh, are in the cover in this particular area. And they have not responded to, to your request for comment? Or did you only send it to Mass Historic? We sent it to Mass Historic and the applicable tribes. tribes. Yeah. And, and no one has. We haven't received any response back. And, and that's not. Uh, 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 unheard of, I guess, you know, to, to not get comments back. Um, but we do suspect, we do expect to receive some acknowledgement from Mass Historical Commission on it. Do you have a process in place for protecting sensitive sites if you come up on them? Um, there, so there's, um, there's a couple things. Um, it depends on what, what you might be talking about. So. Um, <coughs> typically have an unanticipated discovery plan that's in place. So um, if you're in an area previously undocumented, you know, and you find something, mm -hmm. then, then there's a good plan that can be followed um, to, uh, you know, to, to document that. Um, and as far as, um, the, again, the construction easement itself, um, because of the fact that um, it's been been disturbed in the past with regards to excavation and the construction of the project line. Um, that's where the determination came that uh, it wasn't requiring further assessment from the DC. Um, do we usually have the tree ward on the tree issue? So uh, the tree ward is John Wesson, and he mm -hmm. provided no comment. He said he provided me no saying we have no comments. So. Usually that means he has no issue. Okay. So I just note that the town council says that the, does anybody have any concerns about the trees? Town Council has a concern from the pictures. The, I you think the we need to the size, someone from our side to tree warden. Um, maybe he's made no comments because he's on vacation, or he specifically said no comments because the trees are the right size. That's he, what I'm a little comment. He sent an email saying no comment prior to leaving for vacation. Yes. Oh. We, I would like the opinion of our tree warden. So do we have, we don't have the, you did the survey, you said, of the trees? You have the measurements of the trees? Yeah, we, we, yes. Did, did you provide that? I don't remember seeing that. No, we did not provide. Who um, did your, who did that? You did. I, I didn't do it personally, but one of my staff did it for me. It is hard to see in the photographs. They're kind of grainy. Uh, yeah. See where the line is. Yeah, because there are a few trees. There's that the white birch is a birch and it's it's a very light that that's a nice nine inch, twelve inch. So it's just not clear where that mm -hmm. easement is from the photograph. Um, yeah, it's hard to hard to I just want to know what breast height is. What's that? <laughs> Four feet. Four, Four feet? I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying it's possible. It's different, you know? <laughs> Gary's is different than mine. I'm just saying, it's possible. So it's four feet? 4.5 feet. 4.5 feet. I think you should have to get those bags, just saying that. I know that's so not, I know that's not our, our, so it's not our oh, yeah. fish to fry. Okay. I get Punchy. it. Not our circus, not our monkeys, but seriously. It would be kind of, to know um, on the plan where the photographs are, although it shows north, south, east, west, it would be no, nice to um, um, sheet number. Um, well, I have a comment in line with that. Oh, yeah, it, on the um, pale 
drawing has the yellow line of color um, to show exactly where pages. Those, those pictures are coming from the barrels. Um, and then the size of the California tree. Maybe a close up somewhere on that drawing. Oh, okay, so uh, I just want to make sure I have it straight. So we, we did, a, when we did our surveys, our, our biologist had, um, he had a uh, GPS unit with the easement boundaries. And so we walked the boundaries and identified anything above three inches of diameter breast height in that. And he didn't identify anything within the easement at, at, the, at the cross street location. So, so the tree that you're probably looking at is probably outside. It's just really hard for us to tell <laughs> from the pictures. I don't know if you I could, understand. Yeah. Could you walk us through the pictures? Or, I mean, that might be. Well, technically, oh, they're okay. supposed to provide a plan with the trees that are going to be affected, no matter what size, with markings. And then the stone wall that will be affected, removed, and replaced. And that's part of our bylaw. So I, I don't know if you're familiar with but, that. But, but there aren't any trees that are over three inches of caliber, which are the ones that have to be documented. Then a map showing the same thing. Then it says, this is what it is. This is what we see. And then we verify and move forward. Yeah, the stone wall is shown on the, the little piece of the stone wall that comes into the easement from the yeah. south. Mm -hmm. is on the, mm -hmm. the, the drawing that's yeah. on the yeah. But just can't right tell. Like I can't tell where is the east. I can see a stone wall, but I can't see any context. To me, that looks like the stone wall is completely in the east. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I don't know where the easement out. starts and stops. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's. And there are trees, but maybe they're on the right way. I don't know. Yeah, I think this. Um, I had taken this photo looking towards the south mm, southwest to show the wall, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I, I agree. Um, can you just slide over to them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is standing. So the stone wall comes into the easement here. So this is on the west side of Cross Street. Um, there's a gate there. The stone wall, so this is the south. That's the northern edge and the northern tree line there. So the easement is, is right in that area there. And that's the stone wall that comes in. Wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are not trees, those are posts of some kind. Yeah, that's that's a, a gate. I think that's I think that's Liberty Mutual's gate. I don't. That's okay. not your guy, uh, Eversource. Yeah, put that up. That's, so. That was helpful to me. Okay, so you definitely have to move the stone wall. Yes. You you uh, you're comfortable taking more pictures and preserving the stones and replicating as closely as possible this yes. this stone wall. Mm -hmm. yes. That's correct. Uh, are you comfortable with a decision that says you can't cut down any trees within the easement that are greater than three inches? Because um, you're saying there aren't any, right? Right. That's, well, maybe there, I'm just trying to think if there's that. Well, they haven't applied to cut down trees, right? Within they the right applied right. to stonewall. Because what we're going to do, right? But I want to be explicit program. about it okay. since there's a question. There about are the trees. other locations uh, where there are some trees that have grown up in the, the easement that are large, that we have identified larger, not at the not at Cross Street, but. So uh, yes, I am uh, in this case. I am specifically talking about your scenic road application, so it would not apply to other trees right. elsewhere in your your pipeline project. I'm um, just in the scenic road. Decision. No, I, I guess it's, a, it's a, a, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's fine. I, I, whether you, now, that only applies to standing in trees, correct? Nothing that's falling from winter storms that needs to be cut up or anything like that. So, no, right. So, it applies to standing trees okay. within the, the right of way, okay. the town right of way, okay. that are greater than three inches in diameter, three inches or greater. That apparently are at, measured at the 4.5 foot right. line. So we could include that as part of the. Yeah, we'll, we'll be explicit about that. Okay. So if you get out there and somebody has made a mistake, mm -hmm. you'll know that you can't cut down that tree without coming back and asking us. Right. That's fine. That, that, yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions or comments? No, um, uh, but there is one thing. I think that we've had. Um, uh, people with the with removing stone walls to actually send pictures of the before to mm -hmm. um, yeah the before and after yeah to Joan and okay. and then of course afterwards too yeah.
point of clarification, are there two separate aspects of this and we're considering right now the right away versus the approving whatever our role is in the overall project or is it just the one right away? I'm not mm -hmm. sure I understand. Right now we're just doing the scenic road. It's just the scenic road. Not the whole project. We'll do this new public hearing for the scenic road. But otherwise they're still, they came before us, was that just informational? We're talking about the right of way goes through Liberty Mutual property, or just not Liberty Mutual. No, that's the whole that's continued the public area. hearing for the whole pipeline replacement. So two parts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Um, all right. So the decision cri criteria for scenic roads: the degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based. So if the um, stone wall is protected in the before and after and utilizing the staff to ensure that the work is done appropriately and no trees are removed in the right of way of the road within that section of your easement that are of, of three inches or greater caliper width at the 4.5 foot mark. All right, so you, you don't take down any trees unless you're, you come back if you find one. The necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, or convenience. Um, I don't think that um, public safety, um, welfare, or convenience really play here. Um, the compensatory action proposed, such as replacement of trees or walls, so you will re replace the wall as we discussed in its sort of uh, disheveled state. Um, and if you come back, if you have to remove trees that qualify, we'd have to talk about replacement of trees. Availability of re reasonable alternatives to the proposed work which could reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls. There was a question about whether or not you had to even touch the stone wall. Are you sure you have to? Yes. Yeah, we're, we feel pretty confident that we're going to be off the width of our existing yes. unit to work. Yes. And it is also a narrower easement there than elsewhere because it's only 20 feet. That's right. Yeah. Feet That's right. I mean, the trench that is excavated is only going to be, you know, say, 18 inches to 24 inches yeah. wide, but for construction vehicles and fabricating pipe and prints, they're going to need Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historic values, and the consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies. So that's our decision criteria. So, um, I, are there any further comments or questions on this? Mary. Mary are not for the trees road. Uh, three quick things. On the stone wall, in the event that those are significant to Indian tribes, are you going to preserve those stones and do you have some place that you'll take them off site and then use those to reconstruct the wall um, so that there's no damage to them because they could have significance to the Indian tribes? In other words, if you just put another stone wall up here but use other stones, it, it does impact it. No, I think the, the plan would be to, to use the stones from Yeah, the, we do uh, require that right. people preserve this, the stones. I think that we, we satisfied ourselves that there's no historic or culturally significant um, sites in the, this, for this right. small piece, right? Yeah. Um, so we do ask you to keep the stones, and that's why you take pictures and try to track them and try to get them back in the same, as close to the same fashion as you can. Yeah. Okay. And that was my yeah. question. Yeah. Do they put the stones while the work is being done so that you're, you're ensuring that they're going to be preserved? Um, I think to the greatest extent possible, we would try to keep them off to the side of the easement and not bring them somewhere else where they could get misplaced or, or lost, if you will. So I think the intent would be to put them off to the side. Okay. And then with respect to the trees, because this is a scenic area, I know that the requirement to be met that there's nothing greater than three inches perhaps, mm -hmm. but um, do you know approximately how many trees that are three inches or less could be impacted by this? Because if it's seen it and there's, you know, a hundred of those trees that all of a sudden are just gone, now then what happens? We, we, only, we only have jurisdiction over the ones that have, are three inches or greater at caliper. Okay. And my question is just to understand what, what it's going to look like afterwards, but are most of the trees three inches or less, and so those are going to all be gone? Or it's a very small amount. I mean, I, 
the, the the way I look at it is so when you when you move up cross street if you if you're coming up you know, up the road the easement is, is relatively narrow so um, right now it's pretty brushy in there um, so you don't know how many trees will be in there. No, I think I, don't know. I think I heard you say intentionally deforested along the length of it anyway so it wouldn't have been a heavily treed section right. yeah. Yeah. yeah most of the plants that are there are Shrubs. shrubs. They're not. They're not going to be classified as a tree. Um, the west side of our region on Cross Street is actually relatively clear. There's not much growth there at all. The east side um, does have some some shrub growth that will be that will be mowed or cleaned up. Um, there's some fallen trees significantly off the easement. Uh, I don't know if that'll be shown in additional pictures or whatnot. And then finally, it might be applied to this um, application and also the other one. Um, I understand that there are some issues with where this pipeline connects with Ashland, right? Because it's coming through Ashland to Hopkington. Starts at Hopkington. It starts in Hopkington. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, because I, I uh, apologize, I don't have the article with me, but I read that there were a number of issues in Ashland too that still have to be addressed. Before. Um, so we are going actively going through the permitting process in Ashland, um, and we are trying to address the concerns. But um, at this time, I wouldn't say that anything that is going on in Ashland that would prevent anything. Mm -hmm. We we only have jurisdiction yeah. within Hopkinton, but I appreciate the point. Okay. We're also just talking about the scenic road, road. Yes. permit right now. But to be fair, it is part and parcel of the whole, and one thing does affect another. Uh, but our question is right now is, um, I, to your point about the bushes, yes, on that side of the street, you can't even see down, hardly see where the water is. Uh, it's very thick with bushes, as opposed to trees mm -hmm. on that side, mm -hmm. which is the west or north side. Through the chair, can I move yes. the question? Can I move you, the question? You can. <laughs> can I move the question? Can you move the, 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 make, the, make, the make the make the motion to the approve as the scenic road application with the, the conditions that you mentioned? The, with the conditions as to the, is there a second? No. Second question. What were the kind of the one condition no removal of trees that are over and them? also taking plenty of pictures so that the stones are um, removed, protected, and replaced um, and verified by town staff that they have been replaced. Um, as close as possible. Replace with the existing rocks. Okay, got it. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, there's no discussion on moving the question. It's moved. You need to vote to move it. Discussion in general. Okay. Oh, you're moving, you're moving, the, you're moving the motion? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I see. <laughs> discussion, with please. Discussion. Yes. discussion. Go. On this factor, my concern is public safety. And uh, that's one of our conditions of our bylaw. And the reason that you guys are needing to move the stones and possibly uh, deal with some trees is the fact that you have a construction project. Uh, so when I say it's part of the parcel of the whole, uh, we represent the planning board of the town. And we have several issues with your company. Uh, some of them are safety issues, uh, and the board of selectmen has power over those. Some of them are issues in the town that are concerned with planning. We've been asking for, on the electric side, utility pole replacements that haven't been done. Uh, we hear you want to move ahead with this project not because it's uh, a safety issue on your side, but because you want to increase the amount of gas you can move through town uh, to make more money, make with more customers on the other side of, of, of the pipe. Uh, but I haven't heard that the pipe that's existing, which is six inches, has any issues with it. Uh, that being the case, with there being no issues with it, and other concerns that the town is facing, we've asked time after time after time for utility poles. I know it's on the other side of the company, it's electric, 
Uh, but we're asking you, we've asked, historically asked, people who've come before us from Eversource to come back to your Eversource and say, Hopkinton needs this, Hopkinton needs, you know, they need utility poles. Um, there's other issues that are being addressed, um, but utility poles haven't been addressed. And I've been on this board five years now, six, this is my sixth year, and I haven't seen much progress at all, zero progress at all on utility poles. Um, so as a, one of the components of having a scenic roadway bylaw is that we can rely on the safety issue. So safety issue right now is, uh, the work that you're going to be doing in order to have the scenic road bylaw request made is, I don't think, a safety factor at all. I think they should keep the pipe that you have now until you deal with other issues that our town has. And for an example, in the year 2018, there were 57 gas leaks reported in Hopkinton. Nine were repaired. Um, are you guys aware of the number for this year? We're halfway through the year. Uh, it's probably the same ratio. In the year 2018 in the town of Ashland, there were 46 leaks reported. Eight were repaired. And I know these leaks are various types, but uh, there's a site called Lost Leaks, which is run from MIT, that reports on these issues that your own reporting numbers are inaccurate often. And they're a watchdog, watchdog organization, and I'm going to rely on their numbers uh, from MIT and point to the heat mat, heatma.org, uh, which I do every time you guys come before us, and ask that if you could come and report to us how many serious leaks are in the town of Hawkington in the year 2019, we know that there's at least 35 that were not repaired from last year. Um, I don't know the extent of them, but just that number is pretty large. And if you're not going to repair those leaks, how can we rely on you to replace a six inch pipe and make it 15 inches, 20? 12. 12, sorry, my handwriting's messy. Um, August 1st in Kentucky, a 30 inch gas pipe exploded, killing one person and injuring many. I'm bringing up safety factors here. Um, that's a 30 inch pipe. Uh, a 12 inch pipe would be less dangerous, I'm assuming, but twice as dangerous as a six inch pipe that has currently has no problems. So um, last year in the state, a different company than yours, a gas company, had issues that were catastrophic. And because their repairs weren't being addressed. Uh, this is a serious issue in our state, a serious issue in our town especially. Um, I will vote no every time until you guys repair what you need to repair in our town before we, I, I vote yes on anything you do. And I urge my fellow board members to consider these facts, uh, consider the scenic roadway bylaw is written to protect our town in more ways than just looking at a pretty road, it's also a safety issue. Okay, thank you. Um, I wonder if uh, my fellow board members would consider um, an additional condition. I, I would like that, um, I, I remember the, when we had the solar project, the, um, the sensitive report from the from of the um, archaeological survey was sent to our historic district commission. Was that correct? Historical, historic, historical, historical, historical society. society commission. Thank you. Historical commission um, for them to safeguard and review. Got my amendment to add to the as condition. Yeah. Is that? I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't understand the sensitivity of it if, if they can't send it because it's sensitive. I, so I don't know the sensitivity of it either, but that's why we did uh, that other survey was sent to the historical and not sent to us, right? And not yeah, sent to us. 
Which is there also separate open meeting law, so if it's sent to them, what are you? So it, it, I think that, yes, I think that the information is ultimately public. It just means that they would, um, they would have an opportunity to review it with their expertise. Okay. Um, and then um, the public would have to specifically access it through them. It wouldn't just be okay. open to us. I think we're okay with that, right? Is there anybody, I mean, can I ask John to add that? Any problem condition? sending it to our historical commission? Um, I, don't, I don't have a problem. It's just, again, it's one of the, the way, the, my understanding of the, the way it's processed is we, we, we submitted it to, to John in, in the, um, the package that we, we filed. Um, but normally we just um, don't have it put on like the websites and things right. like that. So it's, it's, it's certainly fine for you guys to look at the boards and everything like that. But so it sounds like they've already satisfied the requirement. We just okay. need to ask John to forward it uh, to the No, but, but I don't entirely... Sorry, yeah, no. Chair. I mean, I mean, I mean. To me, I, I haven't heard any of any reason why it's sensitive or need to be kept confidential. Right. And, and so, at the end of the day, if, if you want us to look at it, then the public has a right to look at it That's as right. well, unless you can justify what exactly is so sensitive about it that it can't be shared with the public. Because I, I, I can't make an opinion on it if, if I can't share that with with no, I, I my constituents in Hopkinton. Yeah, I, it's it, the the sensitivity comes from just like I mentioned before. Yeah. Describe um, cultural resources in, in the general area um, in, in somewhat detail and has maps and stuff showing those locations. So, but, um, but I'm struggling with why there's sensitivity around describing something that exists that's a historical significance. So, it's not made through the chair. So, um, if you release that type of information to the public and people start going to those sites and digging up the resources for their own personal interest, those sites are compromised for the public good. So that's the reason it's usually kept confidential. I don't know if there's a way that your consultant can provide a public version of the study that somehow conforms to what the board is requesting and provides the information that's needed. I would say they probably have at some point in time. I can't imagine they do business just solely on a confidential basis. Um, yeah, no, we can. And maybe that can we, satisfy we, we, that. Or I can look into with town council about how this is usually handled. Provide an answer to the board, but, and we can. But the chair uh, wasn't your solution a good solution for us? I mean, why are we trying to make more of what it is? I'm, I'm fine with it. I just yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah, I, I, think that, I think that it should if, if it's to be considered. I think it should be disclosed, and if there's a good reason not to, then. Yeah, I keep thinking back to the the solar project. So they did an awful lot of work, and they did this big survey, and the the. Um, the Native American expert that came before us um, was pretty specific about exactly that. You don't really want to uh, indiscriminately highlight um, these sensitive areas, these culturally sensitive resources and so forth, so that the general public won't excavate and kind of be able to seek them out. Um, but we did, we do have a copy of it at the Historical Commission. So if you have a copy, we can just take care of that on our own. Mm -hmm. I do have a copy. And keep it with that. It, because, it, it, I mean, we can't, we can't not uh, make it, you know, public, but we can't control how it is, it is uh, So just to keep us a little focused, noting the hour. So yes. you made a suggestion. It sounds like we have it covered. We're there. So we'll go back Thank to you. the two. We have a, a motion and a second. Yeah, a motion and a second. We have discussed. Um, Frank, I appreciate your... Um, your focus on the safety issues, I think that we are all of the same mind. I, I am not concerned, personally speaking for myself, about the uh, scenic road application in this regard, um, and I'm prepared to vote yes, but I will um, call for a vote. All those in fa favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Any absten abstentions? Okay, thank you. Um, so we are going to necessarily have to continue, the, that's one done, which is good, necessarily have to continue the other public hearing, um, and when might we do that too? Um, September 23rd, you have Wood Street Solar, uh, Buckland Leonard, Chesmore, <laughs> Tentatively, Legacy Farms restricted land, uh, 
that special permit minor amendment. We have not received an application for that, so it could take that space. Uh, and a presentation from Bruce and the from Cedar Street property. Um, looks like that fills out the meeting. So, there. All right, so um, the 23rd or the 7th, what's the board's? 7th. 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 Yeah, okay. So I'll entertain a motion to um, continue this public hearing to October 7th. The pipeline. So moved. Second. All the, uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, I'll entertain the motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What? What? Second. Wait, hold on. What? So, I'll, I think before the public hearings were officially open, we continued to ask the others. I think we need to. Is that we, right? We, we did open them. Yeah, we opened all of them. We did open them all. But we discussed what dates they were going to be continuing to before we opened it. I'm sorry. We have to close this, the public hearing for Cross Street Scenic Road. Oh, interesting motion to close the public hearing for the cross street. So much. Thank you so much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Man, I'm nervous. Okay. All right. So I did, uh, we did continue one public hearing um, before we had officially opened them. So just um, revote the Abbott public hearing. Abbott Realty. Okay. So let's continue to add it. the Abbott Farms 3 to October 28. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And how about the last one? Last one was already. <laughs> to October 7th. But yeah. did we officially do that? Yes. We did already? Yeah. yeah. Any did others? Up there, Kobe? Oh, you're not in the bathroom. Right? <laughs> oh, oh, we did. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we did all of that we did while all you that. were off. And oh, we yeah. had to, well, I'm sorry. Now that makes sense to me. I'm like, yeah, there was time. No. So we did one. Yes. Okay, so right. we officially withdrew. We officially withdrew. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No action was adjourned. needed on the 4th. No action. Second. And this is, you know, there's a right. lesson in here. Don't do any business when Amy's out of the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she will follow up, which we appreciate. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Thank you guys. Sorry about that.